just the prelude today, Thursday afternoon before the long Labor Day weekend, and the big town is looking great. Fly on in, head for LaGuardia, and you might just pass by City Field. Get ready for day baseball. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Philadelphia Phillies. Adam Plus, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you. Hall of Famer Ralph Connor joins us a little later as the Mets wrap up their four game series against the Phillies. The Mets have seen a number of major league debuts over the last few weeks Wilmer Flores, Travis Darno, and today, 26 year old Matt Dendecker will start and play center field his big league debut. Well, I'll tell you, being there in spring training, he was the most exciting player by far. Great defensive catches. He had a couple of hits. Uh, ruined, though, by this attempt at this ball in center field. Fell on his wrist, broke his wrist, and was out. End result is only played 53 games in AAA, but had six home runs and did a nice job. Dan Decker might have been with the Mets much earlier in the season. Might have even started the year with the team had he not broken his wrist right near the end of spring training. So he missed half a season, only played 53 games in AAA, and now gets his first shot at the big leagues. You know what's interesting about it is that he's inserted straight into center field. Lagares has done a great job there, but they really want to see if Dan Decker does a job in center field. You might see Lagares at some point being a corner outfield. Can you imagine? that outfield yeah. defense if that comes to pass on the mound today for the match is Carlos Torres this was to have been Matt Harvey's start but of course he is done for the year and so Torres inherits his spot on the rotation well Torres's uh, career as a starter his uh ability here with the Mets two good starts one bad one he's had his best work in the bullpen but they're looking for him to go six or seven innings today last year the Phillies traded Shane Victorino to the Dodgers and they got back a former number one draft pick in Ethan Martin he starts today well he throws 95 to 97 miles an hour a great slider he's a guy they think if he doesn't make as a starter could be a closer someday so it's a beautiful afternoon in New York as the Mets wrap up their homestand before heading to D.C. for the holiday weekend the Mets Mets and the Phillies, all the action coming your way this afternoon right here on SNY. Lexus RX. 
by Astoria Federal Savings. By Bob's Discount Furniture, proud to be the furniture store of the New York Mets. And by Mazda, if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Get to City Field Sunday, September 15th for your Mets Knit Hat, presented by Caesars. The first 25,000 fans attending the 110 game against the Marlins will receive a Mets Knit Hat. Get to Mets.com for tickets. Here's your Mets upcoming schedule presented by Models. You can listen to all Mets games on Sports Radio 66 and Sports Radio 101.9 FM WFAN. Mets are in D.C. tomorrow with Dylan G. starting the series against the Nationals. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, then on to Atlanta for the quick turnaround on Monday afternoon, Labor Day. Three with the Braves, then three with the Indians in Cleveland. A nine-game road trip in all for the Mets. They wrap up the homestand today. They've won just two of eight. Carlos Torres will try and get it off to a rousing finish. Mets and Phillies first pitch coming up. Dominic Brown makes his first start of the series. He has sat out the last four games with a sore Achilles, but the third leading home run hitter in the National League is in the lineup today for Philadelphia. Michael Young leads off 21st time this year. He had not let off before this season since 2004. That is not Carlos Torres throwing out the first pitch, but he'll be ready to do that soon. Well, Torres, you see his numbers. He had. Two starts, his first two, he gave five innings, then six innings, only gave up a run, but gave up eight in his last start about a month ago in three innings of work. Well, let's see the Lexus Mets defense. Five is the number. Then Decker, of course, his first major league start. But you got Turner making his fifth start at third base, Brown making his fifth start in right field, and Duda before he was hurt and sent down at five starts at first base. First start since June the 21st for Duda, so it's been more than two months since he started a major league game. There's Den Decker, who uh, was granted Marlon Bird's number six. <laughs> Marlon was barely out the door before Den Decker adopted that number. 
And he is ready to go for his big league debut and not an easy day to play. It's a, a day when the sun is going to be uh, filtered through some high haze. Right field is the toughest field here at City Field, especially this time of year, but center field can be dicey as well. It's also very windy uh, for this afternoon's game. So heads up by the outfielders and infielders on pop ups. There is your umpiring crew for it today. Doug Ennings will call the balls and strikes. The crew chief, Dana DeMuth, works at first. Paul Nard at second. And Angel Hernandez is the umpire at third. Michael Young will be leading off. It is Forever Young Day at the top of both of these lineups with Eric Young leading off for the Mets and Michael Young leading off for the Phillies. Dylan Forever Young, that's what we're thinking, right? There you go. <laughs> Mets and Phillies playing for the 16th time this year. The Phillies have won 9 of 15, including 6 of 9 here at City Field. Mets trying to get a split of the four game series today. There's a new low angle camera for us. It's right behind the catcher and the umpire. What's the over and under when it gets smashed into at some point? The luck we're having this year. <laughs> So Torres set to go young in the batter's box and the first pitch of the day is in for a call strike and we're underway. Well that is a great view isn't it really it? is. Young having a terrific series six for twelve in the first three games hitting a two sixty nine for the year and he takes a fastball strike and it's 0 and two. The one thing you can rely on with Carlos Torres he is going to come in and throw strikes he's done that as a reliever he's done that as a starter. He's been hit at times, but control has not been an issue. Compared to last night's game, it looks like he's in fast forward throwing this ball <laughs> to the plate. Well, at one point last night, we put the clock on Dice Game at Sasaka. And it was 45 seconds between pitches. Torres has thrown four pitches already in about that period of time. For Carlos, just his fourth start for the Mets. He was starting before they called him up. 12 starts for Las Vegas, but. He's primarily out of the bullpen by the Mets. His last start was his only poor one that was in Washington. As he misses outside with a cutter two and two. That was that 14 to one loss in late July where he gave up eight runs in three innings. But his first two starts before that against the Pirates and the Braves were both pretty good. And Young pops one up into shallow right. And Andrew Brown is waiting for it. That's the first out of the day. Each side has a young. Each side has a brown in the lineup today. Right. Only one side has a Franzen, though. That's the Phillies. Kevin Franzen playing first base today. 0 for 4 in this series. He's in the lineup, though, Gary, because 1 for 1 off Carlos Torres with a home run. That was a walk off home run in Philadelphia earlier this year. Carlos Torres and Kevin Franzen at one point were college teammates at San Jose State. And Franzen hits it sharply. Kid today able to knock it down. Does he have time? And sliding in safely is Franzen. So hard hit one hopper that ate up Kintanea and Franzen winds up at first base. You know what's interesting here is you really see that Kintanea does not have a extraordinary arm. Because once he gets it, he had plenty of time. Did a nice job of just getting some leather and ribs on the ball to keep it in front of him. But then still had Franzen, but couldn't get enough on the ball to first base. It sailed on him. And this is probably the only time that it's all right to slide into first base with that ball up the line. Anytime you're trying to avoid a tag, they have charged an error to Quintanilla. I guess the official score feeling as though after he recovered that ball that he had time to throw him out with a routine play. But the bad throw is what causes the error. And the Phillies have a one out base runner. And Chase Utley takes ball one. Utley just two for 13 in this series. Hitting a 270 for the year. The Phillies with six runs and 12 hits last night, but for the season they are the third lowest scoring team in the National League. Not a place they're accustomed to being. And a cutter for a strike to Utley, and it's one and one. 
will be the hard batter in the lineup for Torres to face. Why? Well, Utley is just so quick inside. There's Dominic Brown. He's also quick inside, also dealing with that sore Achilles. But Utley's so quick inside, and that cutter in is the best pitch for Torres. Wrecker sets up inside and he gets the double play ball to Murphy. Quintanilla throws him out, makes up for the error by being in the middle of the 4 6 3 double play that gets Torres through the top of the first. Mets come to bat in the bottom of the first with no score. And then Decker slots in number six in his big league debut. Anthony Wrecker's first start for the Mets a couple of weeks after a brief stint in Las Vegas. Justin Turner gets a start at third. Andrew Brown back in that three hole for the third straight game. As Ethan Martin makes the start for the Phil. Well, he's coming off a tough start against the Diamondbacks. He only went two thirds of an inning. Didn't get out of the first. There we go. Takes a first pitch strike. Did you have a guy with a great arm, 95 plus, good breaking ball, change up his work in progress. Love his arm. Do the Phillies. And he gets ahead on Eric Young 0-2. For Martin, his sixth big league start. He began the year in AAA where he was starting. Went 11 and 5 there. But the cautionary on Martin as Daniel Murphy waits to hit next is wherever he has gone in his professional career, as that curveball's hit to shortstop, and Johnny McDonald makes the play on Young. For the first out, everywhere Martin has gone, walks have been a big concern. Boy, his whole career, he's around that five walks per nine innings pitched, and uh, that makes it very difficult to be successful. Here's Murphy, two for ten in this series, and just four for his last 25. Last night, Wilmer Flores played his first game at second base, and it'll be interesting to see how much he gets used there. Coming down the stretch of the season. Mets will have 30 more games after today, so plenty of time to look at people. Although, with all the things the Mets really need to look at this September, Terry Collins said today he's going to petition the league to allow them to play 12 at a time. Because <laughs> nine's just not enough. <laughs> Pulled through the hole, and Murphy's got himself a base hit. So the first changeup for Martin. Murphy takes advantage of that with a one out single. Well, defensively for the Phillies, the Coors Light defense. First start since Saturday for Brown with that tough Achilles. Achilles. Mayberry, 41 starts now in center field. He never thought that was going to happen. Ruiz, of course, the mainstay behind the plate. Franson and Young, they can interchange those two positions. Franson's at first, Young at third today. Here's Andrew Brown, three for 11 in this series. Yeah, 
and in the month of August Brown hitting 375. Goes after the high fastball nothing and one. Very aggressive Mets team here early in this game against the guy that you said Gary walks a lot of people. Well he's come out throwing strikes yep. today. His last start against the Diamondbacks he retired his first two hitters and would you tell me he was 0 and 2 on the third hitter 0 2 on Goldschmidt Goldschmidt worked a 10 pitch at bat and he never made it out of the first inning they brought in a reliever to face the pitcher. And that's that, amazing. And that became an 18 inning game for the Phillies in which position player Casper Wells had the pitch. And Johnny McDonald wound up pitching in that 18th inning as well. So Martin would like to go a little deeper in this game than he did last Saturday against the Diamondbacks. Murphy at first, 17 steals on the year. And the curveball misses low. A ball, two strikes to Brown. Lucas Duda starting for the first time in more than two months. Waiting on deck. Ethan Martin, 24 years old from Tacoa, Georgia. And the slider gets Brown for the second out. That's why they like his arm. That was nasty. Fastball up and then comes back with a slider away. Just takes off and tough swing there by Brown. So two out Murphy at first and now Duda. He's had two plate appearances since coming back from his long stint in the minor leagues and he's walked in both of those. It's been a, uh, a very rapid fall from grace in this organization for Duda who was the opening day left fielder counted upon to be a big power source. Murphy runs and it gets by Ruiz. Murphy went sliding into second so no chance to think about taking an extra base. And Murphy has his 18th steal of the year. Well, Murph has been a running fool this year. Good sinker there. Ruiz can't handle it. Let's see the jump. Yeah, Murph. Four or five quick steps. Unusual to see Chooch not catch a ball like that. So Duda's got a runner in scoring position with two out. And this is where Duda has really had his difficulties this year. Getting just 143 with runners in scoring position as Martin gets the curveball over one and one. Before he was sent down or, or hurt, Gary, I felt like he was a little quieter at the plate. He's got some that bat is really oh I mean it's not The guy hit his 500th home run here. Gary, Gary Sheffield. He's not Gary Sheffield, but there's a lot of movement there in that bat. Justin Turner hitting fifth in the order on deck. So it makes its way like back and forth towards the pitcher and back. Well, the Mets sent Ike Davis to Las Vegas to lose the bat movement. Duda came back from Vegas with more. <laughs> You see the numbers on Lucas with runners in scoring position. Lucas actually leads Mets who are currently active in home runs. He's got 11. Of course, the Mets' home run leader this year was Marlon Byrd. He's now a Pirate. David Wright's on the DL. John Buck is a Pirate. So that leaves Judah with 11 home runs, leading the remaining players. That's, I think, right. That's one more than Daniel Murphy. Bird with his 22nd home run and 74th RBI last night. He crushed it. Center field into the shrubbery. Made him an instant hero in Pittsburgh. And Duda works a full count. Ethan Martin was the first high school pitcher chosen in the 2008 draft. Only two pitchers taken ahead of him. 15th overall pick by the Dodgers in that draft. 3 2, and the curveball drops low, ball four, and Duda draws a walk. So Duda's now had three plate appearances this returning from the minors and walked in all three. So the Mets have two aboard, and Justin Turner, the batter. Turner had a couple of hits last night a single and a double. 
Ronnie, you and I were looking at the stat sheet today, and we yeah. saw something <laughs> remarkable. I had to do three takes. Usually, uh, I'll see something that will give me two takes. This was three takes. Justin Turner has 41 hits this year, and he's drawn 10 walks, which means he's been on base at least 51 times. He has scored how many runs? Four, Gary. How is that possible? Mathematically, it's not possible. Now think about this. Justin Turner's good base runner. Yeah. He doesn't get, you know, thrown out of the bases uh, unduly. He doesn't get pinch run for. Right. How can you be on base 51 times and score four runs? It's staggering. The bats here with two out and two on. And Martin catches the outside corner. Hardest pitch he's thrown at 94. And Turner didn't think it was a strike. I'm with you, Justin. I don't think that was a strike. To me, it looked outside. But crossfire is Martin. That ball, he kind of throws three quarter, cuts over the plate. And Doug Eddings has always had a reputation as a yeah. pitcher's umpire. And Turner goes after that fastball and misses it. And so Martin has his second strike out of the inning. And the Mets strand a couple. can join the conversation. It's chat live with Bobby O presented by Verizon only on SNY.TV. Carlos Torres ready for the second inning. Dominic Brown will lead off for the Phillies. Brown has had just one at bat in this series sitting out with a sore Achilles. Last played as a starter on Saturday. Third in the National League in home runs with 27, eighth in the league in RBIs with 80, having a breakout season at age 25. But the second half of the year has not gone quite as smoothly for Dominic Brown as the first half did. He had a concussion that cost him a week and a half, a couple of weeks after the All Star break. So. He's been playing only in fits and starts, but he drives this one into center field and he's got a base hit. The first one of the day for the Phillies. So Brown is aboard with a leadoff single, and now Carlos Ruiz hitting fifth in the order. And that Doug Eddings behind the plate, he has not taken any gruff today. He is vocal, he is yelling at the pitchers, heads up, here comes the ball. Trying to move it along. Well, when Ruiz finishes digging his way to China, we should be able to move it along. 
Chooch is two for nine in this series. And he takes one outside for ball one. You know, there was a day when if a batter did that much digging at home plate, yeah, he would he'd be you would falling dust, into that no, hole. No, you would dust him. You, would, you definitely would dust him if it was the right situation. You'd throw one right up and under his chin and he would fall over backwards and he'd go, Oh, that's right, I shouldn't have dug in that much. Okay, sorry, my bad. And you'd proceed with the at bat. It wasn't a big deal, it was just customary. Because what it was sending to the pitcher, I'm digging in because I can't wait to get a pitch from you and smoke it. That's how you felt. So instead of being the smoker, <laughs> yeah. it becomes the smokey. <laughs> Two and one to Ruiz. Proactive, not reactive, Jerry. We're going to be keeping our eye today on a big game being played in Detroit. Big, not only because the A's and the Tigers are both in the race, but because Today Max Scherzer is going for his 20th win. He however is in an early hole at Jed Lowry home run and Oakland's up 2 nothing as they go to the second. 19 and 1 trying to go to 20 and 1. And on the other side Bartolo Colon who's had an extraordinary year in his own right comes off the disabled list to pitch for the A's. I don't know how he does it. He really honestly throws just one pitch. He, he sinks a fastball and cuts it. Doesn't throw much. Else than that, and throw strikes. You know, we've talked for years about that trade that the Expos made when they picked up Bartolo Colon for three players who turned out to have very nice careers. As Tooch goes down, Ruiz a strikeout victim. So Torres has his first strikeout. American League win leaders, Cologne tied for second behind Scherzer on that wins list. But the trade was Bartolo Cologne for a young Cliff Lee, a young Brandon Phillips, and a young Grady Sizemore. Now, you know, the implication has always been that, you know, the Expos made a horrible deal. But here's Cologne you know, nine years later, and he's still going strong. Whereas Sizemore's career has come to a screeching halt. Of course, the other two, Lee and Phillips, they've been all stars in their own right. There's Cliff. Phillips got himself into a little situation yesterday. Here's Darren Ruff, and he takes one of the dirt record, knocks it down nicely. Ball one. One of the reporters for the that follows the Cincinnati Reds tweeted that. Brandon Phillips, who was inserted from cleanup spot to the second place hitter as Dusty Baker was trying to spin his lineup a little bit, has a 310 on base percentage. The hitter that was in the second spot had a 320 on base percentage, so the writer pointed that out. Phillips wasn't too happy with that and let him know. Let him know in rather vile terms. I agree. And the cutter from Torres misses outside. He's behind on rough 2 0. Certainly did not reflect well on, on Mr. Phillips. And what happens a lot of times is the players think that they're going to embarrass the writer in front of others. What they end up doing is embarrassing themselves. Rough one for nine in this series. And Torres gets one over, two and one. Think about it is the, the Reds. I think I uh, have to check today's stats, but I think they have the two players with the top on base percentages in the league. A good curveball from Torres, and it's two and two. Votto and Chu, right? Two. I think they're one two. Well, they broke out against Mr. Wainwright last night. 17 pitches into the game, Wainwright was losing four to nothing. And by the time the second inning was over, he was losing nine to nothing. Hmm. 2 2 from Torres and Ruff fouls it away. John Mayberry, the on deck batter. Ruff playing right field today. We've seen him in left field the first couple of games he's played in this series, and he's a first baseman playing the outfield. There's Dylan G getting ready for his start tomorrow night in Washington, which is where he made his major league debut and has always pitched well. He'll be opposed by Jordan Zimmerman tomorrow. He'll be going for his 16th win, Zimmerman. The Nats have begun to play better. They've won seven of their last eight, trying to make a late push 
for the second wild card spot with the division seemingly out of reach. Washington is seven games behind Cincinnati for that last postseason berth. Two two got him with a cutter. Torres strikes out rough. So back to back strikeouts for Carlos two away. It's always interesting to see how Carlos is going to fare second and third time through the lineup because he just features that cutter that they have been swinging through so far in the first couple of innings. So two out after the leadoff single to Brown. He's still at first and now John Mayberry two for nine in the series hitting a 241 for the year. Johnny McDonald hitting eighth in the order is on deck. And Mayberry fouls a curveball back, and it's 0 2. This is the way Torres looked in those first two starts when he faced the Pirates and the Braves, working quickly, throwing strikes, getting some quick outs. Well, he has been very efficient. Uh, save for that one start. He's going to have to start doing some things inside to the righties, though, occasionally, just to back guys like Mayberry off the plate and then go back to his cutter. The problem that Carlos has had throughout his career, and one of the reasons why he's 30 years old and has never really established himself, is that that cutter is a natural pitch for him. And he's had to yeah. learn how to throw a straight fastball. And of course, if you can come inside, you don't want that cutter bleeding out over the plate. Strike three. So three consecutive strikeouts for Torres after a leadoff single. Nice inning for Torres. Matt Dendecker gets his first big league at bat when we come back. Home second inning, Matt Dendecker makes his first big league plate appearance. Dendecker played 53 games at Las Vegas this year, hit 296 with six home runs. Hit 17 home runs in each of his two prior minor league seasons. And he pulls the first pitch he sees in the big leagues foul. <laughs> Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Major League debuts with the Mets. 
Scott Rice has been here all year. Juan Lagares arrived shortly thereafter. Wheeler, spectacularly in Atlanta. Herman, Flores, Darno, and now Dendecker. A ball and a strike to Matt. He grew up in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Went to the University of Florida. He's a true Blue Gator. Anthony Recker on deck, so you get Dendecker, then Recker. Rhyming couplet for the Mets in the six and seven holes, and it's two and one. Dendecker actually played four years in Florida. He was drafted by the Pirates after his junior year. He didn't sign, and the Mets got him in the fifth round in 2010. Foul tipped and held by Chooch, two and two. Dendecker probably would have been here a whole lot sooner if not for the broken wrist that he suffered right near the end of spring training, trying to make yet another circus catch, which became a a staple <laughs> of the Mets spring training this year. 2 2 for Martin, and he strikes him out with a high fastball. Third strikeout for Ethan Martin. Just a fastball that explodes. On Den Decker up and away. Supposed to be in Ruiz was set up in, but missed the target and missed the bat. And that's been a big part of Den Decker's history, too. He's always struck out a lot, as many as 156 times in a minor league season. Here's Anthony Recker. His last start for the Mets was 13 days ago in San Diego. Then the Mets called up Travis Darno and Recker got sent down then with the trade of John Buck brought back at 10 bats down in Las Vegas while he was there. He was a 400 hitter in triple A. And today Anthony Recker is celebrating his 30th birthday. Which is a bittersweet day for any major league baseball player. Yeah 30 is 30 is not the number you want to hear when you're in your 20s it's fine 30. Especially when you're a backup catcher. There's the talk, Gary, that's behind your back kind of stuff. Well, the other piece is if you are turning 30 as a big leaguer, you would like to have established your career. And Wrecker is still trying to do that. A little bit of a tipping point for yours truly over here <laughs> in the 1990. <laughs> Well, I mean, David Wright hey. turned 30 this year. Yeah, but it didn't but, matter. But he, he could feel good about yeah. that, right? A wonderful career, and he's got a new eight year contract. And today, David has the pleasure of flying to Port St. Lucie, where he's beginning his rehab in earnest. David said this morning he's not quite ready to play in games yet. And his record just got a piece of it. David was happy. He needed uh, some more points on his Duffy's card, so he wanted to make sure that uh, <laughs> he got down there one more time during the summer. Got to have the wings at least a couple of times. Uh, David said today he's running about 60 to 70 percent, so it sounds like it's going to be another couple of weeks before he's back in the lineup. As David said, it, the doctors told him it's a six-week injury, and he's been out for four weeks. You know what I was interested to hear and you can certainly do that when you have a team that's not in it but uh, they wanted to make sure that it was not a chronic kind of injury that they made sure that it was a uh, 100 plus percent um, you know cured of the hamstring before he came back right and I think that makes sense David had a little press conference this morning and was asked about the team right now in the wake of the Harvey injury and of the trade of Bird and Buck and you know how players approach the last month of the season and David says something that was very blunt very direct and very true. He said the majority of these guys there's no guarantee for next year as record strikes out three straight strikeouts for Martin two out of the inning and truer words we've never spoken and that is the motivation for virtually everybody on this team for the last month of the season. There's there's no one that can put it on cruise control here. Everyone is fighting for their baseball lives. I mean if you look around the field just talking about position players now other than David Wright. Who can you say for sure is going to be at their position next year. Maybe Travis Darno. And that and that's a that's a, a jump because of reputation you know. Right. Because he certainly hasn't hit at the major yeah. league level yet. 
but there's really nobody else in the field who can say for sure that they have got a starting spot nailed down for 2014. Well, you and I were talking before the game, Gary, and, and it's not only nailed down a spot, but future financial considerations for some of these players are going to put them in a place where are you going to get production for what you're going to have to pay players that are arbitration eligible next year? Absolutely. Strike three called, and Martin strikes off the side in the second inning. So Ethan Martin has struck out five in the first two innings. When we come back, our Hall of Famer Ralph Kiner joins us in the booth. Mets and Phil's no score after two. SNY Game Day on SNY.TV featuring pitch by pitch coverage, player cards, and in depth stats. Check out SNY Game Day during every men's game now on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. We go to the third inning at City Field. Mets and Phillies no score. And on a bright and beautiful Thursday afternoon, it is a pleasure to have Ralph Kiner with us today. How, how are you, Ralph? I'm fine, thank you very much. Uh... It's uh, great to be back in there and uh, on a good day. And the, the day didn't really start out too well. But now it's fine. <laughs> you mean from rain to sun? Right, yes. Right. Yeah. Well, it's not a good day for the hitters so far when there are eight strikeouts in the first two innings. Can you believe that? You know, if you struck out in the old days, my days, uh, Hundred times you won back to the money of this. That's, that's right, Ralph. They used to say, "You show me a guy who strikes out a hundred times, I'll show you a guy who plays in Triple A." That's right. <laughs> You're gone. There's a uh, ball player named Johnny Moore, and he struck out a hundred times, and he went back to uh, the coast Bay. So when and why did that change? Do you think, Ralph? I mean, guys hit home runs in your day, and yet. Were not expected to strike out a hundred times routinely. Now, if you're a home run hitter, it seems like it's no big deal. I think Dick Stewart had it working down the right way. Dick Stewart went to the Red Sox and he struck over a over hundred times. And when he went to get a raise, uh, the, he said, uh, I struck out a hundred times. Yes, I did strike out a hundred times. And he said, that way I really helped the team and he says how do you help the team and he says I didn't hit him to double plays. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny McDonald retired on the three one put out for the first down and now the pitcher Martin looking for his first big league hit. It is fascinating though we've talked we've talked about this before the Elias Sports Bureau tells us that the last eleven full months of baseball in the major leagues have been 
the most strikeout laden months in the history of the game. Strikeouts just keep going up and up and up. Is that because the Empire's strike zone has extended a little bit? I don't think so. Do you think so? No, not at all. I think one aspect is there are a lot more power pitchers in the game than there were 20 years ago. I think one of the things about uh, pitching is that the uh, the cutter or the slider or whatever you want to call it has made some difference in the game. They can get two strikes on the batter quicker. Now we're talking about the elite of the elite, but Ralph, this is more up your alley. DiMaggio, in one of his seasons, 32 home runs. He had 140 RBIs. 60, 660 at bats. He struck out 21 times. Well, how about the year that he hit in those consecutive 56, games? right? He struck out 11 times. <laughs> and there was a guy that struck out four times. He struck him out four times? Yeah, all season. And he played, played every game. Jeez. Amazing. Two out and nobody on. Michael Young, the batter. He flied out to right field his first time up. So it can be done. He said he was called on strikes uh, and the ball was really a ball. <laughs> it was not a strike. Or he would only had three. That's right. <laughs> hey! Is that your dog with one? No. <laughs> That's, That's our, our, hot our favorite hot dog vendor. Oh, okay. Well, he, he there he is right there, and he has his uh, his wolf. And Keith made eye contact, and then we've been it's been downhill ever since because he always pays <laughs> us a visit. Does Keith buy hot dogs from him? Uh, he almost did last night. Remember? Well, it was a long night. <laughs> Keith gets hungry. <laughs> Torres behind in the count for the first time today. Three and one to Young. He fouls back the cutter three and two. No one thing about Keith. He keeps talking about you got to swing the level. And he goes on and on and on about that. <laughs> and you don't swing level. Or you can if you want to have ground balls. But you got to swing up at the ball. That's the arc. Torres strikes out Young. That's the fourth strikeout for Carlos Torres. He has his first one, two, three inning of the day. No score as we go to the bottom of the third.
record breakers. Willie Mays, 17 home runs in August. He did that against the Mets with Ralph watching as Willie broke his record. <laughs> you know, I told him when I did the kind of scoring, I said, you know, people say the records are made to be broken. And I says, I don't believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> Sure will they appreciate that. <laughs> Carlos Torres one for five at the plate this year. I didn't get to see Willie Mays play until he had already started to fade a little bit as a player the last few years with the Giants and when he came to the Mets. At his best, how good was Willie Mays? He was certainly considered to be one of the greatest hitters of all time. And uh, Willie, of course, started out in the major leagues. And he, I think he went over for 21 in his first running one. And he was actually crying to go back to the minor leagues. And Leo DeRocher was his manager. Leo DeRosa was his manager, and of course, Leo hooked down the Willie Mays. He saw the talent, he saw everything that Mays, Mays could do, and Leo uh, was there, right there to take the balls with Willie Mays. You know, Ralph, Eric Young's up. How fast was Willie Mays from first to home? Well, the record is 3.3 .3 seconds from home to first. Okay. Yeah, okay? And uh, 3.5 of your right hand batter. So I would say that's about it. And Mays was right there. Wow. He could run. And he was right hand batter with a big swing, so that had to slow him down. Well, it would slow him down coming out of the box, yes. You know, it's amazing to me when I see, uh, you know, we just lost the stand usual, but when I see some of the great older players, um, how smaller they are than you think when you read about all the legends, whatever. Whenever I meet Willie, I'm always kind of taken aback by how short he is compared to all that power he has. Eric Young has the Mets' second hit, and that snaps a string of five consecutive strikeouts for Ethan Martin. Oh, a good fastball right down among the knees and lined to right field. And uh, of course, Willie Mays had one of the most, well, the largest uh, forearms I ever saw, oh, and also the largest uh, upper arm. Here's Murphy with a base hit to right field, his first time up. You make a good point, Ralph, and I know, Gary, you've met a lot of the old timers. You kind of know a ball player when you shake their hands mm -hmm. because they've just got those massive mitts and the big forearms. You know, I did that with Sandy Kovac. I put my hands, and I have big hands. Yeah. And I put my hands up with Kovac's, and his fingers were at least an inch long of mine. So you got all that torque on that curveball. Shake hands with Sandy, your hand disappears. Yeah, right. <laughs> Johnny Bench. Johnny Big Bench. Enormous hands. Great grip. Jim Bibby. Could hold what? Eight baseballs in his hand at the same time. That is a big trick. <laughs> Murphy drives one of the gap in right center. That's down for a base. Hit it'll go all the way to the wall. Young around third. He'll score easily. And Murphy pulls into second base with an RBI double. And the Mets have a one nothing lead. Well, Young scores on the base hit by Murphy, and Murphy keeps coming back at you all the time. Every time he think he's in the slump, he comes back out of it, and it's a big base hit. This puts the Mets up one nothing. And Young read it well, scores easily from first. Murphy's 60th run batted into the season, now just five shy of his career high. And Andrew Brown takes the breaking ball for ball one. You know, Murphy's um, 
kind of a paradox as a player for a consistent offensive performer is very streaky. He goes to the streaks where you can't get him out and then uh, he'll go ice cold for a while. But the numbers are usually the same at the end of the year. He's no uh, Joe DiMaggio, in other words, huh? Joe with 56 consecutive games. With one base hit at least. And then had the streak stopped against the Indians. Ken Keltner playing third base made two terrific plays on That's him. That's right. Keltner was a good third baseman for the Cleveland Indians and uh, Didn't he hit in a few games after that, Gary? Yes, he did. <laughs> but you know something in the Monday legs in the one year he played for the San Francisco Seals, Seals he uh, set a record that was even better than that. 61, right? That's right. 61 game hitting streak. But if you take Keltner out of the equation and say he gets a base in that game, he would have had a 73 game hitting streak. How about that? I think he's safe for the 56. In that year, Ted Williams had 406, and Joe DiMaggio won the MVP. Williams hitting 406, and doing it at the last day of the season, did not get the MVP. Grounded to short, Murphy advancing. McDonald throws out Brown for the second out. Well, didn't um, didn't Williams have a year where he? Won the triple crown and didn't yeah. win the MVP. Yes. So the year he hit 400, he didn't get it, and then the year he won the triple crown, he didn't get it. Now, you know, it's it was fairly well known that Ted Williams and the baseball writers didn't necessarily get along. I wonder whether that had anything to do with the voting. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I think the writers have a thing to do. They're the only ones that vote for the MVP. And they, uh, they uh, are the one. Nobody else votes. But when he gave a speech when he got inducted to the Hall of Fame, Ted said, "I was mildly surprised by the vote." Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, they weren't going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Murphy at third with two out. Duda walked in his first plate appearance. Yeah, Lucas takes a fastball strike. You know what really gets to me? Of course, I played a long time ago and everything else. But when the writers and the sportscasters and all the people that are really into baseball, and when they start talking about the greatest player of all time and they don't pick up people like Ted Williams or Joe DiMaggio, they pick up the modern days. And that's yeah. not uh, that's not very really fair. No, you're right. Well, what do you covet sometimes? What you know? Some people don't uh, know the history of the game. They have to pick up a book once in a while. I mean, didn't didn't when they had all the great players of all time at Fenway Park at the All Star Game? Wasn't Frank Robinson left off that list? I think it was. Come on. And of course, Frank Robinson was one of the, the better hitters in. Uh, well, I can't say it better. It's for two people, but uh, he's one of the uh, best of all time. Curveball gets Duda looking, and that will do it for the inning. Seven strikeouts in the first three innings for Ethan Martin, but the Mets grab the lead in the third. Eric Young snaps a string of five straight strikeouts by Martin, and Murphy cashes it in a two strike double, and the Mets lead at one nothing after three.
your number one mobile app for live baseball available for iPhone iPad Android and Blackberry 10 at bat delivers Mets baseball with live audio stats highlights and more text at bat to three one eight two six or visit Mets.com for details. Fourth inning Carlos Torres with a one nothing lead. Kevin Franzen leads off for the Phillies and takes a strike. Franzen reached on an error by Omar Quintanilla his first time up. He was a race on a double play. Torres allowed a leadoff single to Dominic Brown in the second and since then has retired six in a row striking out four of the six. And the curveball fouled off 0 and 2. You know yesterday Ralph we were getting into a discussion about catchers because of the arrival of Travis Darno and how highly touted he is. We were talking about the Mets legacy of great catchers and I mentioned that the first Met ever was Hobie Landreth who was the first pick in the expansion draft. That's true. He was the number one and they picked him but uh, don't forget the immortal. Choo Choo Coleman. And Coleman had a home run in the first spring printing game that the Mets ever played. That, that's a highlight, right? <laughs> home run in the first spring training game. Why is he immortal, by the way? The immortal Choo Choo Coleman. Well, I tried to interview him for a long time, <laughs> and uh, he really didn't put sentences together that well. And so I asked him one time, I said, Suzu, what's your wife saying? And he says, he likes me, Bob. <laughs> that was the end of the interview. <laughs> Didn't you ask him how he got his nickname? Uh, yeah, that was it. Suzu, uh, I said, I figured that, uh, I figured that my father was a Pullman porter. I was on a train and I worked on trains for years and years. Of course, they did have Pullman porters. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he said, well, he said that my father was a, was a regular guy and didn't run on the train. But he was a, Chuchu was one of the great ones. <laughs> Three two and friends and grounds one right at Quintanilla. Handles it cleanly and throws him out. One away. Seven in a row retired by Carlos Torres. One down in the fourth. Well, yeah, Mets had uh, of course uh, a lot of good catchers and of course Gary Carter stands above the rest, I think. And uh, Carter, of course, is, is deceased, and we really missed him, and he was something else. You know, he started out as a right fielder. They made him a right fielder in Montreal. Played some third base, too, in Montreal. They had a pretty good right fielder in Montreal. That's right, before they made him a catcher. Valentine was, was it the one you were thinking and of? And then the I was thinking of Andre Dawson. Too, yeah. Well, he was very good. So you take you take Carter over of, of, of Piazza. That's a tough call. I, right? um, yeah, that's a tough call. But uh, but Piazza, of course, was a great hitter. Yeah. And uh, not a not really a great catcher. What about um, the defense of Jerry Grody? Well, Grody was a good one, though. I said to Tom Saver one time. I said, Tom. Jerry Gordy is really a great catcher to pitch to. He said, well, he's not great. <laughs> <laughs> he could be a little hard to get along with, too, right? Yeah, right. You know, you know, Grody started out with the Colt 45s. Do you remember the game that was in late September when Grody was still a catcher for the Colt 45s? And they played all rookies against the Mets that game? It's in 63, late in September. It's I the only time remember ever that, yes. The, the Houston team used all rookies at every position. Brody a catcher. Joe Rust, Rusty? A Rusty at first that? base. Yeah. Joe Morgan at second base. Jimmy Wynn in center field. That's really the only guys I kind of remember from the uh, research. I certainly. You know what I remember about the Colt 45 baseball field they built before they built the enclosed stadium was that they. Mosquitoes could pick you up and fly <laughs> off with you. 
<laughs> Den Decker with his first chance in center field, and he one hands it to retire Utley. Two out. And there was an outdoor um, minor league stadium. I think it was right next to where they built the Astrodome. Well, it right? was. It was right next to it. I can only imagine yeah. what it was like with an outdoor stadium in Houston in the summertime. It's the only place where you didn't bring your glove, you brought the uh, mosquito over your palace. <laughs> Fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Dominic Brown with two out and nobody on. And he swings and misses, almost screwed himself into the ground. Cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood for his light. Dominic Brown sitting third in the National League in home runs. No Chris Davis in the National League, at least not <laughs> that Chris Davis. It is 47th last night for the Orioles. You know, I, I got a claim to fame. I bought a house in Palm Springs, California, and it was owned by Coors. Coors? Mm hmm. You mean the Coors? The Coors, Bear Coors. You mean the people in charge of defense? <laughs> right. <laughs> Our defense. <laughs> One of two to Brown. And Carlos Torres looking very sharp in his first start in just over a month. One two to Dominic Brown and he gets the ground ball. Murphy hurries in side retired. That's nine in a row retired by Carlos Torres. We go to the bottom of the fourth the Mets with a one nothing lead. By your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. I like that shot of cleaning the spikes on the back of the mound. A lot, a lot of folks know that that there's that contraption on the back of the mound that you can clean your spikes on. Used to be they had to bring the tongue depressor right. out. What time? Cobb used to take his shoes off on the bench and clean the spikes. And he was strapping them up on his He's, a, he's a, a, a file. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Oh. Maybe I don't want to see him play. <laughs> of course, we don't talk about God, but he's got to be up there with anybody. Yeah. Justin Turner leading off of the home fourth. Turner struck out his first time up. I always heard Ralph back in, in the, you know, the days when they were just starting to induct the first group into Cooperstown, mm -hmm. that people in that era, back in the 20s and 30s, considered Cobb the better player than Babe Ruth. And they also considered Hannes Wagner of the Pittsburgh Pirates better than Ty Cobb. 
now you know from, from the perspective of today you look at Ruth and how he revolutionized the game and you say well wait a second how could anybody be a better player than that well Babe Ruth hit more home runs than the combined American League did totally yeah. I mean so you're talking about a guy who really Dominated the game and then so are you telling me that some players maybe before Ruth didn't like the changing of the game and like the small ball kind of triples and doubles and bunting a guy over and hitting and running and stealing a lot of bases That's as true. opposed to the big power game uh, very true mm -hmm. and of course uh, there was more science to uh, hitting by choking up on the bat and, and choosing a place where you held the bat uh, near the trademark or down from the trademark Al Simmons, for example, was one of the greatest of all time, and he was a bucket hitter, and he stood in the very, very back of the batter's box. Wow. And they were used a 42-inch bat, hmm. the maximum you can use. How did he lift it? With the help of his <laughs> wife. <laughs> Well, think about it. His ball four and Turner's on with the leadoff walk. 42 inch bat. The longest bat that'll ever be used by major leaguers it's today. Maybe 36, right? The longest by far? I used a 37 inch bat and a 42 inch bat at one time. Really? How many well, ounces? Uh, 42, well, I'd say for around 40 ounces. Really? Wow. Yeah. Folks at home, people usually use 31, 32, 33 is the heaviest bat that any player will use today well most of the batters uh, use uh, bigger bats and the heavier bats just to protect the bats from breaking mm. you also had a lot thicker handles in those days that took up a lot I of the use weight a thick handle bat yes here's den decker for his second career plate appearance struck out his first time up and that takes a strike i'll tell you the model i used was a gene woodland model and in the Pacific Coast League, Jim Woodling for the San Francisco Seals hit 400. So when you would get models, it just had the model was the person's name was the model of the bat. But when I played, there would be a number like a U2 or a P271. Yeah, well, I had, I had a G69L was okay. my number. Yeah. There you go. You won't forget that as long as you live. No, that's, that's crazy. It's like a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one to Dendecker. Just trying to catch his breath. It's that kind of day, yeah, right? right? First day you play in the big leagues. I mean, playing in New York, day game against the Phillies. You know, people probably don't know that they play baseball for years and years and years without lights. Yeah, right. The last team that put lights in was the uh, Chicago Cubs. That wasn't until 1988. They were going to put them in for before World War II. But they uh, stopped that when the war started. Dendecker works the count full. Martin has already struck out seven, walked two. Turner is at first with nobody out. See if he's running. He's not, and Dendecker keeps the bat alive. Another breaking ball, three two. By Martin. It's a lot of guts to throw that pitch. Well, the ones that threw 3 1 fastballs are looking for another job yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Again, the 3 2, and Dendecker strikes out for the second time. That's eight strikeouts now for Martin, already a career high for him. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Brooklyn Burger, the premium steakhouse burger, and the official burger of the New York Mets. Visit Keith's Grill 
at City Field located on the field level behind section 132 to enjoy Keith's favorite Brooklyn burgers. I think well, at least there's one customer. I think it's time for Keith to get behind there and uh, start. Uh, well, if he, some burgers. If he signs autographs over there, I'm sure they'll buy burgers. Exactly. If you want an autograph, <laughs> buy a burger. It'll work. Is that mercenary or not? <laughs> yes, it is mercenary. It's a, it's a capitalist society, you know. <laughs> Record drives it deep left field, right down the line. That ball is out of here. Anthony Wrecker with a two-run homer. Number six for Wrecker, and the Mets have a three-nothing lead. His first start in the two weeks after coming back from a short stint in Las Vegas, and he crushed it. That was probably the longest home run hit in this ballpark in the history of the game. <laughs> that was a really big, big, big hit. Do you think Vegas had uh, anything to do with that? Maybe you got lucky at the crap tables. You know, it's right, red and black or out of here. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. We were watching the last two days. John Mayberry take one hand off the bat and cock the catcher a couple of times. Well, Wrecker has almost a three-quarter swing and knocked that ball out of the ballpark. No follow-through at all. It's a very strong kid. Oh. And today uh, is his birthday. Right. He'll run on his 30th birthday. So that's. A nice accomplishment for Anthony Wrecker. Too bad he isn't 80 years old. <laughs> 80 home runs? Yeah. <laughs> One and two to Kintanian. What's the follow through or lack thereof? Now they tell you in tennis, don't take your top hand off. What do you think about that? Well, he might disagree, at least on that swing. Charlie DeLau and he was the one that said you hit with one hand. He put more guys back in the minor leagues than anybody <laughs> I know. But you know what? He had one good disciple who could have hit any way, and that's George Brett. Line to center, and it stays up for Mayberry, two out. Yeah, I, I don't know if Charlie Lau helped Brett hit 390, but it certainly helped Charlie Lau's career. Yeah. He was uh, up there with Tony Gwynn as far as being able to hit 400. Who's Charlie's disciple that went on to the Red Sox? Walt Rinia. That's right, Walt. Well, Carlos Torres now with a 3 nothing lead gets a turn at bat. I'll tell you what I can't understand. Ted Williams was a batting instructor for the Red Sox and Charlie Dow got involved with the ball players of the Red Sox and the players went to Charlie Lau instead of Ted Williams. Now that's being about as dumb <laughs> as you can get. Well the only way I could figure it is most of the players realized they could never be Ted Williams. So they didn't try to copy him. Huh? Right. Maybe they had a better <laughs> chance of being Charlie Lau. Uh, also, um, Ted could be a little short with you if you weren't paying attention. Ted could be, yeah. <laughs> well, he uh, worked with Bobby Doerr as second baseman. And he said, I want to work with you all spring. And he said, you'll come out of a better hitter. And so Bobby Doerr tried to get better with Ted Williams' spots. And finally he went to Ted and said, Ted, I can't hit it that way. He says, you want to be a lousy 280 hitter? He says, go ahead and do it your way. <laughs> well, walking the pitcher with two out earns Ethan Martin a visit from the Phillies pitching coach, Rich Duby. Well, Martin's thrown the ball extremely well. He's made a couple of mistakes. They've got to be happy the way he's pitching. The problem is, is that they're... The Phillies are struggling for runs just like the Mets have been. Right now, let's check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kevin? 
You know, when you get your pitcher to get on base, it's a pretty good thing, Gary. And the Mets have done an okay job of it this year. You know, they've certainly had some good at-bats from Jonathan East. We saw it the other night with a three-run double. Dylan G had that seven foul ball at-bat a couple starts ago. So they've seen some production there. I mean, no one can be the Cubs. They've driven in 25 runs. They've got five home runs. Travis Wood has a few of those, by the way. But it's an important part of the game. And, you know, Dave Hudgens was telling me today, you know, it's a delicate balance. Because go back to spring training, Zach Wheeler got hurt taking cuts in the cage for a game. Hurt that oblique. So he said, you know, depends on pitcher schedules, things like that. But generally, you know, four or five days a week, they're either working inside hitting or outside in the cage with a regular BP group early. So the biggest thing for the pitchers is to bunt. And Bob Guerin kind of takes care of that. They do that every single time they hit. And, and, and that's the most functional thing for a pitcher. You know, Dylan G and Jonathan East were talking with me, and they you know, they said, look, we take a lot of pride in it. You know, Jonathan East said, you know, I want to get up there and get a hit. I want to contribute. I'm not up there to, to be an easy out. And I think especially those guys coming off the game that Nice had, it kind of shows you the importance of that ninth hitter coming through and helping you get a win. Well, we certainly had that yesterday. Cole Hamels had the big hit for them. Very few people when you're young grow up wanting to be a pitcher. Everyone wants to be an everyday player. What happens to pitchers, and the reason you become a pitcher, is because you don't have the talent to swing the bat. So it's always a, a constant kind of trying to get yourself better, of uh, you know, knowing situations. And the most important thing the Mets haven't done well this year is get the ball done and uh, sacrifice. Young takes a call, third strike. Class casts a withering glance at Doug Eddings. Nine strikeouts for Ethan Martin, but Anthony Recker gets a fastball and takes it out of the yard. His sixth home run. And the Mets now with a 3 0 lead as we go to the fifth. Plus heated debate on the latest news from the Jets and Giants on Loudmouth presented by Caesars Atlantic City today at 5:30 only on SNY. That's now with a three nothing lead as we go to the fifth. Carlos Torres has allowed just one hit over the first four innings. He's retired the last nine, and Carlos Ruiz will lead off for the Phillies in the fifth. Ruiz struck out his first time up, one of four strikeouts for Torres on the day. So while Ruiz hits it down the right field line and that lands fair in the right field corner. And Ruiz chugs into second base with a leadoff double. So on the first pitch of the fifth inning, Ruiz has the Phillies' second hit. Usually a ball hit that soft will curl foul, but just dropped in a foot inside the line. So the Phillies got a runner to second base for the first time today. And now Darren Ruff is the batter. Ruff struck out his first time up. Boy, he has been a red hot batter in the month of August.
I would you like to have the name Ruff, R-U-F. When you sign autographs, we got to be. <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. This is Mel Ott, of course. He had only three dollars. Ron Say. Ron Say is in there. Yesterday, Pete Orr played left field, replaced by Darren Ruff. Three for three. Kaline has a thing that uh, he didn't do and should have, should have, should have done was uh, K and then with a line. Well, that would be easy, right? Yeah, about that. <laughs> now there's some Chinese players and Oriental players that have only two letters for the last name. Well, the what great, a way to sign out of the world. Well, the great uh, Japanese slugger, Sadaharu O. Oh. Yeah, about them. He had over 800 home runs. If you ask David Johnson, it's because he protected him that one year back in cleanup. <laughs> he took uh, somebody that was going to break his record, and they took him out of the lineup, but he wasn't playing. Wow. To a two to Ruff, who struck out his first time up. So the uh, the game we're following today out of town is at Detroit, where Oakland leads the Tigers four to one in the fifth, trying to deny Max Scherzer his 20th win today. Now Scherzer began the year 19 and one. Only two pitchers in history had ever done that before: Roger Clemens back in 01, and Rube Marquardt back in 1912 for the New York Giants. Marquardt won his first 19 ball games that year. He didn't finish the uh, season that well, but imagine winning that team. And also, on top of that, I went to an old timers game, and Mark Corp was there with his wife, and he was a really good dancer. <laughs> I'll tell you, he could move those feet. So, let me get this straight, Ralph. You know, knew somebody who played 101 years ago. Rube Marquardt. Well, I'm 101. <laughs> no, you're not. No. <laughs> not yet. I didn't count the years I went barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> On the inside corner, and Ruff is caught looking. Five strikeouts for Carlos Torres, second time he's gotten rough. What do you think, Ralph? Strike? Yeah, it was certainly a strike. I don't understand what he was looking for there, but it's been a perplexing kind of series with the Phillies here. So one out, Ruiz still at second, and here's John Mayberry who struck out his first time up. No, huh? talking about the Phillies, how about Dick Allen? Nobody talks about yeah. him. He was one of the great hitters. Of course, when he was with the Phillies, he was known as Richie Allen. Popped up. And Duda calling. And puts it away. Ralph, I don't know if you remember this, but Richie Allen hit maybe the longest home run I've ever seen at Shea Stadium. Hit it over the parking lot in left field. He hit it so far. So, like, the picnic area hit it over there? Over that. No. Yeah. Over the back wall I know. behind the picnic area. Wow. He was capable of doing that, though. He could hit. He was the first guy, Richie Allen, Dick Allen at the time, who was a coach on the Texas Rangers staff, who taught me the facts of life about baseball as a business. And I was down in spring training. He sat me down next to him on the bench. He was telling me stories and. He said, what do you think you're going to get out of spring training? I said, I want to be the fifth starter. He said, you're not going to be the fifth starter, son. John Matlack's making X amount of money. There's no <laughs> chance they're going to get rid of him. You got no chance. And he was I said, right. I said that he was right. <laughs> you could dream, yet. <laughs> That's right. It became a dream. I remember one time I said, Dick, uh, could you come on my small counter's corner? Torres throws out McDonald. That'll do it for the Phillies in the top of the fifth. Well, Ralph, it is always a great pleasure <laughs> having you here. Some great stories today. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing. Okay. What's John McDonald doing? If he's not bunny, he could finish your thought.
<laughs> You're right. Who punts with two on the runner at second anyway? And I had a good start. <laughs> we'll save it for the next time. Halfway through, Mets with a 3 nothing lead. Field and bat ninth, and the new pitcher, left hander Cesar Jimenez. Oh, see, his numbers so far doesn't get much better than that for Jimenez. Left handed hitters are doing nothing against him. And uh, I don't know how to say it. Martin's losing three to nothing out of the game, didn't go five. Impressive. What a strange pitching line. Right. Four innings, four hits, three runs, three walks, and nine strikeouts. At one point struck out five batters in a row but gave up the two run homer to Anthony Wrecker and a run scoring double to Daniel Murphy and that has Martin on the short end he threw 86 pitches in those four innings of work including 31 pitches in his last inning. But he lasted longer than he did in his previous start yeah. when he got only two outs against Arizona. So now it's Jimenez working in relief. And Murphy pops the first pitch up. Into shallow right where Ruff comes on through the sunglasses. He can't make the play. And Murphy hustling all the way stands at second base. Well, Ruff had a rough time playing left field in this series. And frankly, Chase Utley didn't give him a whole lot of help. Well, this is honestly, uh, when I watch this play again, uh, Chase Utley, and I, I don't think I've ever said this as him as a player, he kind of gave up on that ball. Now, what he's going to say is Ruff was calling it all the way, but he's not an outfielder. He's a first baseman, well, and the experiment is not working so far. Yeah, he's shown throughout this series he's just he's not going to get to much, and if you're Chase Utley, you, you've got to catch that ball. Well, the wind's blowing in. You can see it from the flags. If you look at the flags, you know that the wind, if it goes up in the air to right field, is going to be blown back to the infield. Well, Murphy happy to take advantage. He's now three for three, his second double of the day. Off this bat, this probably starts about 200 feet on the field, but the wind brings it back right to Utley. And it lands, what, six feet, eight feet from Utley? So the Mets have a runner at second and nobody out. Andrew Brown, the batter. He's 0 for 2, struck out and grounded out. That being said, this is the major leagues, and a ball up in the air that long has to be caught. I mean, come on. Well, I don't know what Darren Ruff is doing playing right field yeah. on a major league team. I mean, you know, he just doesn't have the foot speed to be able to get to that kind they're of ball. Doing what the Mets are doing. They're putting people out there to see if they can do it. Well, they're getting some answers. 
Uh, the Mets experimented, you know, last year and this year. They had Duda last year in right, now this year in left. And they've now decided that that doesn't work. And they've moved past that to play a more defensively oriented outfield. Ball to strike to Brown with Duda on deck. So Murph three for three. The double there. Nicely done. If you take him where you can get him. Hey. Well, Murph had a hit as a pinch hitter last night. He's been struggling, but this kind of day can get him going heading into the final month of the season. Yeah, Murph, Murph wants <laughs> to go again. Yeah, but now his reputation is preceding him. Jimenez was eyeballing him all the way. Well, no one's holding him close, so he can get as big a lead as he wants to. Problem is, he did that yesterday. They, they did the play with Rollins behind him and they had him picked off but or two days ago sorry. And Brown punches one the other way that's a base hit. Murphy being waved around third he'll score easily. Andrew Brown with an RBI single makes it four nothing New York. Brown with that big leg kick jams him. You know, a lot of times you watch a hitter and you'll hear people say, you know, he's trying to work the ball the other way. He wasn't. Just jammed, late, break. And Murph, of course, is going to score. Ball hit too softly. Now, we talked earlier about Justin Turner and his four runs scored. For Murphy, that is 75 yeah. runs scored. Now, think about this. Murphy is. Coming into the day at a 304 on base percentage, which is not good. It's not getting on base at any kind of high rate. And yet he's in the top 10 in the National League and runs scored on a team that has not had a big RBI bet this year. I mean, Marlon Bird had, what, 71 before he was traded? So how does that compute? How does he wind up scoring 75 runs? Well, that's what happens when you bat second. That's what happens, Gary. You know, uh, what I didn't take into account with Turner is that Turner has a lot of pinch hit appearances you know so when you have pinch hit appearances you usually don't score in that uh, part of the game unless you hit the ball the ball yeah part. right and, he, and he's not a home run hitter Duda has walked and struck out in his two plate appearances today getting his first start in better than two months Mets with a run in the third two in the fourth on Wreckers two run homer and now one in the fifth on Brown's RBI single he's at first with nobody out and Jimenez bounces the slider one and two. Today's AT&T trivia question. Ryan Sandberg is the third manager who was already inducted into the Hall of Fame at the time of his managerial debut. Who were the two others? Hmm. Well we've talked about one of them today. Yeah. Don't believe we've talked about the other. Another slider from Jimenez, two and two. Who knows though? With Ralph here, we go from 1912 to 2013. Right. We cover. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. We run the else. gamut, but see, to me, that's what makes having Ralph here so incredibly special. That we can have a conversation about Rube Marquardt, who won 19 straight games 101 years ago, and Ralph met him. That's unbelievable. Met him, watched him dance. Watched him dance. That was the original Dancing with the Stars. Assessed his dancing skills. <laughs> Gave him a 10. He did. Duda strikes out for the first out of the inning. Ty Cobb gave him a five. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Justin Turner who struck out and walked today 0 for 1. Cesar Jimenez had stints with the Seattle Mariners widely spaced. How about this? He pitched for the Mariners as a 21 year old in 2006. Then had his most extensive big league time with the Mariners in 2008 and then resurfaced again with Seattle in 2011. And now two years later with the Phillies and has given up a run for the first time as a Philly. 
on the outside corner to Turner, who's had uh, a couple of disagreements with the home plate umpire Doug Eddings today. Our microphones picked up a good portion of the conversation that ended his first inning at bat. It was beautiful. What did he say? I, I've been in the game 25 years. Well, and, uh, and a little extra, a little extra, on top of that. Matt Harvey talking things over with Mets assistant trainer Brian Chicklow. It's an interesting um, story that came out yeah. in the wake. Of yesterday's Harvey Halliday conversation. Runner goes, and the throw on a hop, and Brown slides in safely. Utley thought he tagged him out, but Brown gets credit for the stolen base. His first. Well, gone first move is Brown, and this ball is down. Well, I'm sorry, it's right there. Strike easy for Ruiz to throw, but he one hops it. And I think that's a good call. Looks like the uh, tag by Utley was late. In front of the bag has to reach back for that left leg and doesn't get it there. It's a tough inning for Chase Utley. Paul Narth, the second base umpire, making the call. So Andrew Brown has his first stolen base of the year. Two and two to Turner. And that's up and in. Three and two. It looks like Mr. Pitcher for Detroit. I don't know why I'm blocking out here. Scherzer. Scherzer is uh, not going to get his 20th today. 6 1 now, Oakland. Brandon Moss, another home run. That's four in the last wow. three games. 25 for the year for Moss. 3 2. And Turner smacks one foul. Well, he was going for his 20th today. To put it in perspective, it's August 29th. On the morning of August 29th in 1968, Denny McLean was 26 and 5. McLean won 31 that year, but how many starts did McLean make that year? 41. 41. <laughs> so in those days, pitching in a four man rotation, but he started more than a quarter of their game. That's right. That's never going to happen again. He, he was bumping someone at some point. I know the last. National Leaguer to win 30 games was Dizzy Dean. And when he did that, he not only started 40 games, he pitched in relief for the Cardinals. That's what, 1934? Those guys would just throw and throw, throw in the bullpen, pitch and starts, and they would throw batting practice on their day to throw on the side if they had one of those. Long turn at bat for Turner. This will be the eighth pitch from Jimenez. Waste that one away. It certainly wasn't from 30 feet. It was from 60 feet, six inches they threw BP. And without a screen. Nothing like coming to a day game, huh? A New York Met fan, right in the middle of the Phillies and Eagles fans. Or maybe it's not a Jetons I jersey. A, I, mean, a, I think it's a Freeman McNeil jersey, and Turner's punched out. <laughs> and he's just exasperated with Doug Eddings. And they continued their day long conversation. Oh, here we go. This is uh, a time to get off the field. I, you know, as a ball player, you're fed up with it, but you know, you're in the lineup. Well, two strikes. You tell me at home, is that too close to take? Well, Turner's going to get himself run if he doesn't stop soon. Matt Dendecker takes a strike. That's 11 strikeouts for Phillies pitching today in less than five innings. So you can understand the frustration. And Dendecker takes it wide, one and one. Ooh! Turner almost took out his teammate with the helmet. 
I've seen guys come to blows over stuff like that. And, you know, that one there, no, because he didn't fire the helmet. It's a difference. But I've seen guys fire the helmet and hit someone. Next thing you know, they're up in the bowels of the stadium duking it out. Dendecker pops it up in foul ground. That'll do it for the Mets in the bottom of the fifth, but they get a run on Andrew Brown's RBI hit. 4 0 New York as we go to the sixth. It's red hot. G against Jordan Zimmerman tomorrow Zach Wheeler and Danny Heron Saturday night then John Neese against either Ross Ollendorf or maybe Steven Strasburg Strasburg worked two innings last night and they had to come out after a rain delay so David Johnson said Strasburg might pitch mm -hmm. that game against the Mets Sunday night for more on the Nats let's check in with Kevin who has today's view from the Pepsi porch and you asked why might he pitch that game because the Nationals believe they are still in this wild card race Bernardino pops up the butt Wrecker. what a play Bernardino retire. That's a well of a play by Anthony Recker. I'll continue with the th thought on the national. I'm sure we'll look at the replay here. Is you know, they've won seven of eight. They're playing well. They are seven back of the Reds in the wild card race. So obviously they've got a lot of ground to make up, but they feel like they're in it with an awful lot of go. And the schedule is favorable coming up. The next five series are against the Mets, Phillies, and Marlins. And the Phillies and Mets they play twice of those next five series. A couple things have gone right for them. First of all, they've gotten healthy. That's been big. They've got a couple guys like Harper and Span who are on long hitting streaks right now. Bullpen has gotten better. Clipper's been great. Davey Johnson's even talked about closing him. Storens, it's being recalled from AAA, has been very, very good. And then there's Jason Worth. Because the Nationals haven't played well, he has kind of been under the radar. But guys, last 50 games, Jason Worth batting 380. He's driven in 39. So the heartbeat is faint, but it's still there for the Nationals. Let's go back to you. Talked about uh, Drew Storen coming back from the minors. Last night, Storen came in, needed to get John Carlos Stanton out in a one run game. Stanton hit one about 600 feet foul. <laughs> I mean, it was the loudest foul ball you've ever seen. And then Storen got him out, and the Nats held on for a one run win. Good. Tyler Clifford can stop pouting. He's got his buddy back. Yeah. That's what, that was what happened the last time the Mets were in town. Yep. Storen was sent down and Clifford ripped of Nats management for the way they handled that situation. Well, the Nats have been flirting with 500 all year, but as Kevin said, seven and one of their last eight games are a couple of games over now, and they've got a shot. I mean, I hate to say this, but we've seen teams come from seven yeah. games down before this late in the season or later. 
especially hate to say that when the Phillies are in town. <laughs> Curveball strike three call. Boy, Carlos Torres is on his game today. Six strikeouts for Torres that matches his career high. Well, he's been hitting the corners. He's got a perfect umpire back there, and this curveball that he doesn't throw very often, surprising young. So, two out and nobody on. The Phillies have had only three base runners all day. Kevin Franson reached on an error in the first. He was erased in a double play. Dominic Brown led off the second with a single. Carlos Ruiz led off the fifth with a double, and that's been it. And, you know, for Torres, a guy who's been able to pitch. Two, sometimes two and a third in relief at a time. He hasn't started a game in a month, so you don't know how long he can go. But here he is under 80 pitches in the sixth inning. Well, you have to remember also is that Dice K did not have a good start yesterday, so you didn't want to blow out your bullpen again. You needed Torres to go deep into the game, and boy, I, I think this is a perfect script if you're Terry Collins. Well, if you can get him through the sixth or even. Into the seventh, that would be more than you would expect. Torres has gone as far as six innings in a start this year. It was against the Braves. He's ahead on friends in one and two. And the curveball in the dirt. And you know, this is this is show me time for Carlos Torres, too. You know, the yeah. Mets. For all the great young pitching that they have in their system because of all the innings limits and all the roster considerations. Torres and Matsuzaka are going to be in the rotation the rest of the year, barring some kind of injury. And this is a chance for Carlos Torres to show that he belongs on this team as that young pitching bubbles up through the system. Well, also, you're looking at Jeremy Hefner, who just had surgery, who you always think of as kind of the swing man for the Mets, even though he's in the rotation. Carlos Torres would be a perfect man for that position. 2 2 to Franzen. Lifted to center field and Den Decker eases back. Two out. Side retired. Three out. Right there's still three outs in the inning, right? I wasn't paying attention on it. But yes, you're right. It's never changed. Six scoreless innings for Carlos Torres in a 4 0 Met lead. Home sixth inning, Mets with a 4 0 lead. Anthony Recker has re been responsible for half of that with a two run homer. That came in the fourth inning, his sixth of the year, and it came on his 30th birthday today. And Ethan Wilson of the Mets media relations staff has passed along the information that Recker's home run was the 18th time that a Met has homered on his birthday. Wow. 
Mike Piazza did it three times as a Met. What well, when's his birthday? Does it say? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, September 4th. Okay. There it is. Hall of Fame induction. Last day of the season, I believe, right? Correct. It'll be the 29th of September, a month from today. Edgardo Alfonso homered twice on his birthday as a Met. Jim Hickman did it twice. Least likely, well, actually, this is a perfect corollary to record. Charlie O'Brien homered on his birthday as a Met. OB. Mike Recker, a backup catcher. May 1st, 1992. And Jimenez falls behind three and one. Also, Carlos Beltran, Cleon Jones, Gary Carter, Jeremy Burnitz, Jim Beecham, Kevin Elster, Todd Hundley, Tommy Agee, and probably the most unlikely of all, Wally Backman. Really? Waldo. 1986, September 22nd, Wally Homeward on his birthday. The great Waldo Pepper. Of course, there are only half half of the players in Major League Baseball who ever get a chance to homer on their birthday. The rest were not born in the proper months. Like Keith. The only time Keith could homer on his birthday would be in the World Series. Close season, yep. Keith's birthday, what's the 20th of October? October 20th, same as uh, Mickey Mantle. Oh, wow. Makes sense. Well, that's why he said he always loved the number seven. Number seven. Three and two to Wrecker with Quintanilla on deck, and then Carlos Torres. Nobody throwing in the Mets bullpen, so it looks like Torres will continue on. Wrecker fouls off another one. Wrecker getting the start today, giving Travis Darno. A day off and it's been a rough go for Darno at the plate, just three for 28. He's a couple balls hard, but overall just has not seemed to be in much of an offensive rhythm. Well, you know, Travis Darno does not need me to come to his side, but what happens for these young catchers, other than trying to learn a pitching staff that they haven't caught, is it's very heady, folks. They come to the Ballpark very early. They spend an inordinate amount of time going over hitters and uh, scouting reports, and they try to take that all into the game and then work with what the pitcher has that night. It's a, it's a lot to ask of uh, the young catchers these days. And also, add two hits a game if you can. Doesn't shock me when young catchers get off to a tough start offensively. Do you think it's easier if a young catcher is catching a veteran staff? Where pitchers are more likely to be calling their own game. That no, makes it worse. Makes it worse because, um, and I hate to say this being a former pitcher, but older pitchers tend to be very judgmental, very critical, and very alibi Ike. It's not their fault, it's the young catcher's fault. He put down the wrong, wrong finger. Wrecker held the swing and he draws a walk. So the Mets get the leadoff man on in the home sixth. Let's check in with Kareth Burke. She's in the studio for a game break presented by your local Tri Honda dealers. It's just one more thing. He'll come back tomorrow. We hit two home runs. He's like the movie that from Monty Python. There's something wrong every day. <laughs> something going going wrong all the time. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> 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 pops one up on the infield. Who's going to get it? And the answer is Michael Young, the third baseman. And Kintony is retired. I mean, he's had a hip injury. He fouled one off his knee. He fouled one off his shin. He had, um, what was the other thing he had? A hip. Right. He had a bad hip. But there was one more. Yeah. Oh, he had the um, the abdominal injury. That's right. That's right. So he's had all those things, and he still goes out, and hits a home run every day. So he'll be fine. Carlos Torres is struck out and walked. Batting here with Wrecker at first and one out. 
And takes the pitch low. Watch right before the pitch is delivered. Torres will hop up about two, three inches up in the box, get closer to fair territory. Helps you get that ball fair. It's a veteran move by the youngster. And swinging away, and he fouls it off. So they took the bunt off on the second pitch. Uh, I don't think they did, because here comes Tim Tuffle. All right, let's decide. <laughs> Drive around the majors presented by Acura. Fourth home run in the last three games for Brandon Moss. And the A's lead Max Scherzer and the Tigers 6 to 2 in the sixth. Bruce Chen seems to go on and on. Kansas City leads Minnesota 3 1. And Torres gets the bunt down. A nice one. And Jimenez makes the play. 1 3 on the sacrifice. First of the year for Torres. Justin DeFreitas up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Eric Young coming up with a runner at second and two out. Young is one for three, singled and scored a run in the third. Young last night reached 30 stolen bases for the first time in his career. He and his dad joined a select group of father son combinations who have each had 30 stolen base seasons. The Griffey's in there. Griffey's are not. No. Rounded toward the hole. Knocked down in the backhand, but no play for McDonald. It's an infield hit for Eric Young. So Young has his second hit of the game. Well, Johnny Mack usually makes some spectacular plays, but get this gets this one kind of right off his wrist and the small of his hand there and, kept it in play. And with Young running, he probably doesn't throw him out anyway. Right. And Wrecker alertly did not turn at third because McDonald's immediate look was to third base to see if Wrecker had taken a turn there. So now Murphy, who's three for three on the day, got some assistance his last time up, a ball that fell in in right field. In front of the hard charging Darren Ruff. A single and two doubles today for Murphy. He's driven in one. He's scored one. He's at a stolen base. First and third and two out. Yeah, Murphy takes a strike. Well, Carlos Torres is going to go back to the mound for the seventh inning. The longest start of his career was seven innings, and that was four years ago mm. while pitching for the White Sox. Ball and a strike to Murphy. Cesar Jimenez working his second inning of relief. Andrew Brown would be next. Talking about players accomplishing things on their birthday, and mentioned Keith. Keith did not ever hit a home run on his birthday. Yeah. But he did something better. 1982, the Cardinals won the World Series on his birthday. Oh. Game seven against the Brewers. A balk. Oh. A balk called against Jimenez, and that'll bring in a run. The record trots down the line to score, and it's 5 0. So the Mets get a run on a ball. I've seen that happen in a while. Oh, he did the lean in. He can't do it. See how he leaned in? And when you lean in, it usually is accompanied by getting into the stretch. He leaned in and didn't get the sign that he wanted. Watch him lean in. Didn't get the sign he wanted. So, oh, let me take it. That's, that's enough. That's a ball. Good call by Doug Eddings. Murphy gets tied up, but he held it up. Two and one. So the Mets have now scored in four straight innings. Wrecker coming home after drawing a leadoff walk. Young now at second with two out.
Now Jimenez with a 2 2 and Murphy has to jump back full count. Now the 3 2. And Murphy hits it one through the hole, a base hit. Young around third and heading home. Brown's throw to the plate is not in time. Murphy down to second. His fourth hit of the day produces his second run batted in, and it's 6 0 New York. A big day for Daniel Murphy. His fourth four hit game this year. Well, the defense positioning of the Phillies here, although looked like it was going to be a hit, but that is where Murph likes to use that part of the ballpark. Throw not close by Brown. Short hop Ruiz. Well, his first three hits today came to right field. That's pretty unusual for Murphy. That more of a typical Murphy hit. He takes second on the throw to the plate. Ryan Sandberg comes out to talk to the home plate umpire Doug Eddings and he'll make a double switch. So the Mets have tacked on two in the sixth inning. Justin DeFreitas coming in. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon Wireless. We'll be right back to City Field. Ben's tri-state dealers visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Changes for the Phillies. Michael Young moves from third base to first base. Pete Orr comes in to play third base. He'll bat seventh where the pitcher had been. And the new pitcher Justin DeFreitas hits number two in the order. Well that ERA is good but DeFreitas has done better on the road. Last 27 at bats against him. Only four hits away from Citizens. Bank Park finished off the uh, eighth inning for the Phillies on Tuesday night worked a one two three inning Andrew Brown first man to face him with Murphy at second and two out two runs home for the Mets here in the sixth and Brown swinging and missing nothing in one Brown had an RBI single his last time up just punched one over the first baseman's head and into right field to drive in his 17th run of the year. 17 RBIs and just 98 at bats for Brown. He's gotten to play more and more recently, and he has been productive. Hitting well over 350 in the month of August. You know, in this booth, I leave the hitting, of course, to the, the master and Keith, but 
the one thing you notice about Andrew Brown is the bat speed that he has that is exceptionally um, better than some of the other Mets hitters. Little dribbler and that'll go foul. Right well, on cue with that bat speed. Well we've seen two things out of Andrew Brown. One is that he's got some power. And two is that he has the ability to take the ball up the middle in RBI situations. Yeah. Well, I, I think that he also has, um, for a guy who has power, a decent two-strike approach. And we don't say that very often uh, about a lot of hitters. So, you know, he's not afraid to get jammed, as we saw in his last at-bat. And interesting enough, he probably is the best high ball hitter of the Mets' right-handed hitters. Well, he started out his career in the Cardinals organization, and you can see yeah, that he has a little of that. I mean, well, that, whole, that whole team is, you know, very much a two strike approach, put the ball in play, hit a line drive somewhere kind of a team. Defreitas ahead one and two, and Brown fouls it away. I mean, the, I think the number at some point, I haven't looked at the Cardinals lately, but about a month ago, they're hitting 337 with two outs and runners in scoring position. It was unbelievable. And their numbers all year with runners in scoring position have been outrageous, led by Alan Craig. Mm -hmm. Freitas ahead one and two. And Brown goes down on the breaking ball to end the inning. But the Mets add a couple, one on a balk, the other on Murphy's fourth hit of the day. Carlos Torres heads back to the mound with a six-nothing lead. The Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium right across the way. Any, uh, any anything happening there today of interest? I, I, I don't know. I have not paid attention. Usually I make it over there once or twice. Roger Federer is playing right now. Eh, has been. Has been. <laughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Only tweaking our producer. The biggest Roger Federer fan on the planet. How can you not be? He's an artist. Carlos Torres working on a two hit shutout as we start the seventh. Chase Utley leads off. Utley 0 for 2 today and a check swing and it goes over the bag for a base hit. Well, Utley's had a miserable series, but that time, not even meaning to swing, he picked up a base hit. Excuse me, swing. Doesn't know where the ball is. Shifts on. Base hit. It's just his third hit in 16 at bats. He's had some foibles in the field as well. 
But it's the third time that the Phillies have had a leadoff hit against Carlos Torres the first two times. In each case he retired the next three hitters. Dominic Brown had one of those leadoff hits that came in the second. Grounded out of the fourth one for two. Brown's first start in this series coming back from an Achilles issue. And Torres misses up and away ball one. Mets have their bullpen ready. David Ardsma, Scott Rice. In case Torres needs help here in the seventh. Carlos trying to get through the seventh for just the second time in his career. Before today Carlos Torres had only made nine starts in his major league career. Two and four with a six point seven ERA in those nine starts. But you have to go back and look at some of the specifics. The last time he started for the Mets he got beat up. A little looper over the head of Quintanilla and that's a base hit. Utley will pull in its second. So a check swing and a flare have produced two hits for the Phillies to start the seventh inning. I was going to say the prior two starts that Torres made were both outstanding. One against the Pirates one against the Braves and certainly this one even better than that. So now Ruiz will try and make something of this situation first and second nobody out Ruiz hit one down the right field line for a double his last time up. And the curveball misses for ball one. Got to walk through this situation if you're a pitcher. Ruiz is up there. He knows they're down six. See rough on deck. He's trying to go big on you. He's trying to take you out of the ballpark. So what do you do as a pitcher? Keep the ball down. Keep it away. Let him try to pull it. Get yourself a ground ball. Sometimes as a pitcher, Gary, you can tap into what a hitter is trying to do and use that against him. Utley is on second. Brown at first with nobody out. Mets have turned one double play today. Torres would love one here from Ruiz. But he misses high, two and one. You can see he's getting a little tired. That cutter is not cutting. It's up in the strike zone. Those are telltale signs uh, for a manager. Terry's got a little rope here with a six nothing lead, but keeping a close eye on Torres. And Ruiz fouls it back. Two and two. Well, that's a little break that you get sometimes as a pitcher. That ball's out of the strike zone. Probably should be three and one. But Ruiz wanted to go deep. He gets a pitch up in his eyes and goes for it. It's hard to do, but sometimes when you're in these games, you don't want to add. Sometimes you want to subtract. Just keep it down, keep it away, let them get themselves out. Well, does it hurt Torres in this situation that he doesn't really have a, a refined changeup? That that hurts because he doesn't have the change of speed. But I think his change of speed pitch is the one he threw to Michael Young. That curveball that he starts right at the hitter could be a choice here. Two and two to Ruiz, and he flies one out to right center, and Dendecker drifts over second base. Utley tags and moves over to third. But that's the first out of the inning. No. Nothing flashy out of Den Decker today, but he's handled everything that's come his way in his major league debut. Now Darren Ruff bats with first and third and one out. Now here's a predicament if you're the manager, right? You know that your pitcher is getting a little tired. He's been in your bullpen, has done a great job, but he's owned Ruff in his first two at bats, so. This is the better option you would think. Well with the six nothing lead aren't you going to leave him out there till he allows a run. Uh, Ninety one pitches though that's a lot to ask of a guy that's been coming out of the bullpen for you and that doesn't even include. Uh, you know. Throwing on the side getting ready to come in the game and not getting in. And even pitched in relief in the first game of this series on Monday got a couple of outs on what. Was his normal throw day. Pete Orr on deck and ready for his first at bat of the day. And Ruff unable to catch up with that fastball. Orr's got it up there at 92. All arms aren't equal on a staff. Some are treated more valuable than others. 
Well, this was Matt Harvey's day to pitch. And this is not Matt Harvey on the mound, but so far he's given the Mets everything they could have possibly asked for. Oh, and two to rough. And he goes outside, one and two. The most pitches that Torres has thrown in a game this year is 96. That was in that second start when he went six innings against Atlanta. As Harvey can only watch. One, two. Curve ball hit out to right. That'll get a run in. Brown goes back to the warning track to reel it in. Utley Tags comes in with the first Phillies run, sliding back into first is Brown. A sacrifice fly for Darren Ruff, and it's six to one New York. I know this is weird to say, but you'll take that <laughs> if you're Carlos Torres. Gave up a run, got a key out. And that's going to be all for Torres as Terry Collins makes his way out to the mound. So Torres has done more than the Mets could have possibly hoped for today. Goes six and two thirds. He's been charged with just one run, and he walks off after a very successful outing. Uh, just one run over six and two thirds. Now Scott Rice in to face Pete Orr is up for the first time and gets ahead of him with a sinker. Well, he's done everything you'd want him to do. He stranded inherited runners at an 85% clip as he's making his 70th appearance. So he takes the ball every day and he has a 1.23 ERA since the All Star break. He's gotten better as time's gone on. 70 appearances leading the National League. I don't think he's got a shot at Pedro Feliciano's club record. But he now has one record in his own right, Scott Rice. And that is most games pitched by a Mets rookie. Get that he's a rookie. It is hard to right? remember sometimes because yeah. he's 31 years old. The record had been Bobby Parnell. Who in 2009 pitched in 68 games as a rookie, and now Rice has the record with 70. The major league record for games pitched by a rookie is 88. The Tigers' Sean Runyon in 1998, left-hander, specialty wow. lefty, 50 and two-thirds innings, 88 appearances, and that's the rookie record. Including today, the Mets have what? 30 games left, right? Or is down on strikes, so Rice comes in and gets his man. 
Phillies break up the shutout, but an outstanding day for Torres. There are two managers beside Ryan Sandberg to already be inducted in the Hall of Fame at the time of their managerial debut. Well, Ted Williams was one of them. Of course. And the other was Luke Appling, who became the uh, interim manager of the Athletics in 1967. He had been inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1964. Hmm. Ted Williams inducted in 1966 managed the Senators and the Rangers starting in 1969. So that's a, it's a very exclusive club. Duda finds the hole and he's got a base hit. So Duda's first big league hit since June and he's aboard to start the home seventh inning. Let's see how much conversation happens between Mr. Eddings and Mr. Turner here in this maybe Turner's last at bat. Well, they've already had an all day discussion. Turner has struck out twice. First time it was the second strike that he was upset with, and then the last time it was the third strike. And Eddings really let him have a lot of rope. And right now they have it on mute. <laughs> Turner's swinging too. No fooling around. Well, that's the one lesson you learn, right? That's right. When your umpire has a big strike zone, Mets have struck out 12 times in this game, 12 in the first six innings. There have been 19 strikeouts overall in the game. So it's it's been a pitcher's kind of a day as far as the strike zone is concerned. There goes Duda. It's a hit and run play, and Turner fouls it off. What? Well, Terry's been doing that more and more lately. Hmm. Oh, one count. Interesting choice, right? He's doing a little experimenting. Or Duda just missed a sign. <laughs> already had a couple <laughs> signs missed already. Played one and two to Turner. There's your Audi Mets box score. Big day for Daniel Murphy. Four for four, two doubles, two RBIs. And Anthony Recker on his 30th birthday. 
18th time Ahmed has homered on his birthday, a two run shot for record. Oh. And Turner is plunked. So he gets on base the hard way. Second time he's been aboard today. Well, this catches him right in the back, doesn't it? Trying to come inside the Freitas does not get on top of no left elbow. You could hear Turner up here go. Aye. Gets him that much closer to Ron Hunt on the Mets all time list. 41 right. One ahead of David Wright. So the Mets have the first two men on and Matt Dendecker gets another chance for his first big league hit. He's gone 0 for 3 today. Two strikeouts and a foul pop up. Batting here with first and second and nobody out. And the curveball from DeFreitas misses for ball one. Matt Dendecker out of the University of Florida making his major league debut today. Amazing, like you. I mean, it's August 29th, 2013. You'll remember it forever. I remember mine, September 6th, 1983. I'll remember it forever. Gonzalez Herman up at the Mets bullpen. He'll remember it even more if he gets a hit. Yeah, yeah. Because then it'll be inscribed on the baseball. And DeFreitas falls behind him 3 0. I got a hit in my first game, but it, it, you didn't. If you're a pitcher and you got a hit, you didn't collect the baseball, it wasn't. First strikeout? They didn't save those in those days, did they? It was uh, Joe Morgan. I wasn't going to take the ball. I mean, <laughs> come on. Then Decker takes a strike. First win, you have that one, right? Uh, first win, I do have that one. In fact, John Stearns gave it to me after the game in the Pittsburgh clubhouse. I'll never forget it. That he thought enough of it to retrieve the ball. Nice. Here's a 3 1, and Dendecker fouls it off. 91 mile an hour fastball, 3 and 2. Well, we talked about this yesterday. Dendecker's history has been that every level that he's played at, he has struggled and then gone back the next season and dominated. So you don't know what he's going to do this last month in the big leagues, but you do it with the knowledge that that's the way his career has gone. He tops this one back to the mound. DeFreitas takes his time, goes to second, and gets a force play there. Never had a chance to turn two, so he took his time and got Turner for the first out. Well, what happens when this ball is topped like this has a lot of spin. So sometimes it takes you a second to get a good grip. And I think that's what happened to DeFreitas. But he didn't panic. Good play. So Duda now at third, Den Decker at first with one out. Now Anthony Recker. A two run homer in the fourth and he walked and scored a run in the sixth. And he has handled Carlos Torres. You were looking at something today that I thought was very interesting and I really was not aware of how good a catcher's ERA Anthony Wreckers had this year. You know I always think that the catcher's ERA can be happenstance sometimes. Uh, he doesn't play a lot this or that. But we're talking about a catcher who never caught Matt Harvey. It was John Buck every single outing. Except one. Except for one. So you're talking about the guy who has the lowest DRA is thrown to one catcher, it's not Wrecker, and his is 2.98. To me, that makes it very impressive. And lower after today, the mm -hmm. way Carlos Torres pitched. You know, he's not a kid. He said he's 30 years old. Um, he's fighting for a job, too. He's saying, hey, if Darno's your number one, I'm your number two. There goes Dendecker. Ruiz with the throw. Dendecker steals the base. So man, Den De Matt Dendecker with his first career stolen base. Have you ever seen a game where there's been this many stolen bases against Carlos Ruiz? I mean, you just don't see it. Utley called off the jam. He knew there was no play at second. So two in scoring position now for Wrecker with a two and zero count. The infield comes in. Quintanilla on deck. And up and in three and zero. Oh. 
Now Kinsney is a left hand hitter but. To figure they're going to pitch around record here. They might pitch around him but they might give him a strike here so I, if I were Terry Collins I would say swing the bat. Three and oh. Breaking ball on three and oh. See, that's the kind of instant respect you earn when you hit a two run homer that's earlier right. in the day. You get the 3 0 breaking ball with first base open. Well, you might get the same pitch, like you said, with that base open. And he did. And he fouled it off three and two. Interesting. Wrecker was asking Ruiz a question after that pitch. I don't know what that could be. Now, this is the pitch that could surprise you. Sometimes you get those two breaking balls 3 0, 3 1. They might try to sneak a piece, piece of cheese by you. Fastball. 3 2 from DeFreitas. And he throws the breaking ball, and Wrecker is on base again. Able to stop the swing. So, Wrecker on base for the third time today, and the Mets have the bases loaded with Omar Quintanilla coming up. So, a single, a hit by pitch, and a walk load him up. Dude at third, Den Decker at second, and Wrecker at first. Quintanilla is 0 for 3 today. Just two for his last 20. Middle infielders for the Phillies a little tighter than you'd expect. I mean, Kintani is not a burner going down the line, so you'd figure you should be able to double them up. And Utley especially playing well in from double play depth. One and one to Omar. Mike Davis has come out on deck to be a pinch hitter with the pitcher spot due up next. You know what's interesting about these situations is that Omar Quintanilla every single day works on trying not to hit the ball in the air. And this is the time that he needs to hit the ball in the air. 18 runs batted in for the year and 263 at bats. And the slider low and in, two and one. Philly pitchers have now walked five and hit a batter today to go with the 12 strikeouts. It's a lot of pitches. Right. A lot of pitches without the ball being put into play. Two one. And there's ball three. 2 1 breaking ball to a 220 hitter uh, with the bases loaded. Yeah, it's just the, it's the wrong call. It's the wrong pitch. What are you trying to do here? You're trying to get a ground ball. The Freitas has a good sinker. That's the pitch to go with. You know, a lot of times you get into the mode and you got to snap yourself out of it or trying to trick hitters all the time. Sometimes you got to pitch to contact. Here's a 3 1. And there's ball four that forces in a run. Now well, the Mets have scored a run on a balk. Now they score a run on a bases loaded walk. And it's 7 to 1 New York. So Kintanea gets the RBI, bringing Duda home and earning DeFreitas a visit from Rich Doobie, the Philly pitching coach. You know, think about it. Rich Doobie has not had to do this in a few years. Go out and have conversations uh, with his pitchers concerning walking hitters, not being aggressive. Probably had the most aggressive staff the last five or six seasons. Well, the Phillies unaccustomedly have the worst staff ERA in the National League, dead last at 4.20 coming into the day. Well, what this prolonged inning has done here in the seventh is guarantee another turn at bat today for Daniel Murphy, who will be seeking to become the first Met to get five hits in a game since Ronnie Polino did it. In Philadelphia, oh, the night we got Bin Laden. It's 
right. Right. And May if I was 2011. If I remember right, wasn't he on the DL and that was his first game off the yep. DL that he got those five hits? Exactly right. So here's Ike Davis to pinch it with the bases loaded and one out. Mets now with a seven to one lead. And Ike first pitch swinging. Nothing in one. Dan Decker now at third. Wrecker at second and Kintony at first with one out. Ike is one for seven in this series. Had a base hit to left field yesterday against Cole Hamels that drove in a run. The ball and a strike to Davis. J.C. Ramirez. Up in the bullpen for the Phillies. One one to Ike. And a high fastball has him reaching. One and two. One two from DeFreitas and I got a piece of that one. I'm looking at the list of the 30 times in Mets history that the players had a five hit game. And I believe if I'm reading this list correctly that is only one player who's ever had three five hit games as a Met. Max. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, you knew that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> of course one of them was in a. Outside. Now he, if I'm reading this correctly, he did it. He had all three in the same season. In 1985. 85. One in the 19 inning game. No. No. One in Montreal. One in San Diego. And one in St. Louis. Wow. August, September, and October of 85. Three five hit games. Davis hits a foul down the left side. Because I know he went for the cycle. Right. Uh, in Atlanta in that 19 in the game, but I guess he didn't. I think he only had four hits in that game. Only four. Yeah. <laughs> in the 19 in the game, the Mets played against the Dodgers in 73. Rusty had a five hit. He did. Wow. In fact, Rusty had two five hit games as a Met. They were both in extra innings. Piazza had a couple. Two and two to Davis with the bases full. And he checks the swing. He went around strike three. So there's the second strikeout for DeFreitas and the second out of the inning and Ike lingers to talk about it. Well, uh, he's going to talk to Eddings. Jesus Christ. You know, I think what irritates hitters more than anything else is when two strikes runners on the base when the home plate umpire doesn't ask for help. I think that irritates them whether it's right or not. Uh, from that angle it yeah. makes like he swung. So that is uh, 13 strikeouts for Philadelphia pitching today. Eric Kratz coming in from the Philly bullpen might be needed as a pinch hitter. Meanwhile Eric Young bats with the bases loaded and two out. Mets have scored in five straight innings. Mets have been so run starved over the last week or so. Just 13 runs in the last seven games coming into today. But a seven spot this afternoon. Eric Young is two for four. A couple of singles. He scored two runs. And Freitas falls behind him 2 0 with Murphy and his four hit day waiting on deck. Well, if you look at the scoreboard, you see Murph. Mets are due two. And Young drives one to deep right field. Back goes Ruff. It's over his head and off the wall. De 
Decker scores. Wrecker scores. Quintanilla scores. Young to third with a three-run triple. Ten to one New York. Eric Young unloads his sixth triple of the year, drives in three. Well, I shortchanged Eric about three. Fastball right down the middle. And he's got some pop when he's ahead in that count. Anthony Recker is going to come in and score his third run of the game. Turner in, not Turner in. Quintanilla in. And a triple there by Young. And we're going to get another, another double switch for Ryan Sandberg, who's been wearing out his scorecard today. So the Mets with four runs home in the seventh. J.C. Ramirez will come in out of the Phillies bullpen as DeFreitas has gotten tagged here in the seventh. Eric Kratz will come in as part of the double switch, and we'll be right back to City Field. The pitcher, J.C. Ramirez, will bat fifth. Well, Ramirez was involved in the trade for Kiff Cliff Lee when he went to Seattle for Philippe Beaumont and J.C. Ramirez for Cliff. Well, the Mets with a breakout day, and Daniel Murphy has been front and center. Murphy four for four, two singles, two doubles, an RBI, a run scored. Trying to become the first Met in two years to put together a five-hit game, and he pulls one just foul. Nothing in one. Eric Young with three hits, three RBIs. Anthony Recker, a two run homer. It's been a big day all the way around. It's been a rough year for the Mets at City Field. And here's an idea how rough. It's only the second time this year the Mets have scored in double digits at home. First time, opening day. Little tapper to shortstop. And it's cut off by Orr, who throws out Murphy. And the side retires. So Murphy retired for the first time today, but the Mets put up four and lead it 10 1 after seven.
pitch for New York. Well, the man, you can see those numbers presented by Caesars Atlantic City. Great numbers. Only the walks are the only issue with the Gonzalez her men. Other than that, just outstanding since being called up. His last outing, a perfect example. Monday night against the Phillies, he got a couple of outs, issued a couple of walks, and then got himself out of trouble by getting Dominic Brown on a foul pop up. John McDonald will lead off for the Phillies. McDonald gave him the start at shortstop today, giving Jimmy Rollins the day off. The Phillies only have two players left on their bench Rollins and Cody Ashey, who we remember came out of the game with a hamstring issue last night, is probably not available today, although they think. Remember last night they called it a strain slash cramp for Ashey? Where is that today? It's more on the cramp side. Oh, cool. They're hoping. I think Mr. Ashey's hoping too, right? No. Well, you know he's a rookie getting a yeah. chance to play his first month in the big leagues. It was it was really a, a lesson in watching a young player not wanting to come off the field because he knew this is his one chance to shine. McDonald 0 for 2 today 5 for 60 on the season and he pops one foul off the left side. John McDonald is 38 years old. This year he's playing with his third different team began the year as a pirate. Went to the Indians where he spent a large chunk of his career and now with the Phillies. Well, John McDonald is the kind of player that you would love to have if you have a first division club because he's a guy that can pick it late, get an occasional. He's like a Nick Punto kind of player for the Dodgers. And he mixes in a base hit. So the Phillies have the leadoff man on in the eighth. And now Roger Bernardino will bat for the second time. Bernardino came on a double switch, and first pitch he saw from Carlos Torres tried to bunt his way on. And Anthony Recker made a spectacular catch of a foul pop up on that bunt. I mean, Recker on a ball that wasn't hit very high in the air went about as far as you'll ever see a catcher will go in foul ground to make a diving catch. You know, we didn't spend that much time on it because Kevin has given us the Washington Nationals and how well they're playing. But full out sprint, lays out, and just gets it on the tip of his glove. It's been a pretty good 30th birthday for yeah. Anthony. Home run, couple of walks, and that catch. Ball on a strike to Bernardina, who has just had a miserable time of it in this series. Started the first three games. Yesterday went 0 for 6. He's one for 13 in the series. And he hits this one deep to right field. Brown goes back, takes a look, and it hits off the Pepsi porch, a two run homer for Roger Bernardino. Well, his day has gotten a little better. It has, right? Cuts the med lead to 10 to 3. Well, it's the at bats like these from Bernardino. That makes all of us that watch this game every single day just not understand why he's not a better player. Right. I mean, he's got power, he's got speed. Showed off the power here. His fourth home run of the year, his second as a Philly. And very few people go on the Pepsi porch, although he likes hitting at this ballpark. He's had some more important home runs against the Mets. Quite a view there, right behind home plate. It's four dollars. <laughs> well, Gonzalez Herman, a single, a two-run homer, and now he's behind on Michael Young, two and zero. Oh. So an uneven beginning to Herman's outing. And Young hits one back to the mound. Herman has plenty of time. And that's the first out. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by your local Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2013 Accord. Buy StubHub. Next time you plan a trip to the ballpark, head to StubHub where you can find great seats and earn great rewards. And by Audi, truth in engineering. Pedro Feliciano getting ready in the Mets bullpen. Mets with a 10-3 lead in the eighth. Here's Eric Kratz up for the first time. Came in in a double switch the last half inning. 
Gratz the backup catcher caught the game on Tuesday night went 0 for 3. He's made 50 starts this year he's got some power. Started a lot early in the year when Ruiz was out with a 25 game suspension. And he fouls off that breaking ball one on one. You know, Gary, we talk all the time about hitters giving up at bats in lopsided games. We never talk about relievers coming in a game and doing the same thing. You know, the scores 10 to 1. Sometimes it's hard for you to have the eye of the tiger. You go out there, the next thing you know, you're giving up a two or three spot. So each game, you've got to be mentally prepared. It's, it's hard sometimes in these lopsided games. You know, we talk about that with closers, yeah. and you can almost understand it because they are such adrenaline hounds yeah. pitching in a one run game, trying to get the final three outs. But for a rookie, should it be that way? It, I, I'm just saying that it's it's not that uh, it's not that even you think that you're half stepping it. You don't. You think that you're going full bore, but sometimes you're not. So you have to have that checklist in your in your brain about it. it you know, let's make sure. Let's execute. Let's do what we've got to do to get through the sitting unscathed. And you know, you're helping your ERA, helping your innings, all those things, and impressing your manager. Kratz fouls off the changeup. Doug Eddings has the, uh, I think, the second best arm of umpires in the game. Behind uh, Jim Wolf? Yes. Doug throws it kind of off his back foot. Jim Wolf steps into it, but good arm. Wolf's got more pedigree. Yeah, right. Fly ball out to right. Brown looking through the sunglasses, and there are two out. Let's check in with Kareth Burke in the studio for another game break presented by Nissan. The one time met Jason Vargas. How many people remember that? Uh, you and I. <laughs> He came in a trade with um, a tall left hander. He was a relief pitcher from the Marlins, right? Remember his name. He was hurt a lot of the time anyways in a Mets uniform. Um, Where am I wrong? He came with Adam Bostic. Yeah, he's a left hander, tall left hander to that's when the Mets traded Matt Lindstrom yeah. to the Marlins. Smack to right center off the bat of Utley, and that'll get him the gap and go to the wall. Utley pulls in at second with a two out double, his second hit of the day. Talk about not giving up at bats late in the game in a tough series where you have not hit the ball well. Utley stays in there and gets a couple of late knocks. Terry Collins on his way out to the mound. Dominic Brown is coming up. He's got Pedro Feliciano in the bullpen. So he'll bring in the lefty for that matchup. Not a good outing for him, man. He gives up three hits and two runs in two thirds of an inning. But the Mets are up 10 3 in the eighth. We'll be right back to City Field.
Final out of the top of the eighth. On to face Dominic Brown who's two for three today. And a fastball for a strike. Well Feliciano's going to cut it. He's going to cross fire it. He's going to sink it. He's going to change up on it and slide it at a little over 80 miles an hour. Working back to back days got a couple of outs in the game last night. And he throws that at the hip of Brown and tries to get it to bend over. It doesn't. One and one. Jimmy Rollins out on deck to bat for the pitcher who's hitting in the five hole today. Utley at second with two out. Feliciano trying to pick it up for Herman, who got touched for a single, a homer, and a double among five batters faced. And a chopper for Murphy. Nice easy hop. Side retired. Phillies get two, but as we go to the bottom of the eighth, the Mets are up 10 to 3. Dylan G pitches against Jordan Zimmerman. Our coverage begins tomorrow night at 6 o'clock right here on SNY. Andrew Brown leads off for the Mets in the home eighth inning against J.C. Ramirez. Mets with a 10 to 3 lead. Brown is one for four on the day. Singled in a run in the fifth inning. Dylan. Mets have scored in five straight innings. <laughs> When's the last time that happened? Now well, opening day. <laughs> well we'll never know. I'll <laughs> I'll look it up for you Gary. Brown drives one deep to left field headed toward the wall. It's out of here. Andrew Brown with his fifth home run of the year. The Mets with their second home run of the day and it's 11 to 3. Well, injuries and trades present opportunities. And we talked about the bat speed of Andrew Brown. He's got it in spades and delivered there. Fifth home run, 18th RBI. Mets have now scored in six straight innings. Hanging slider definition. So the Mets continue to add on. Now Lucas Duda, who's one for three in a walk in his first start in more than two months, and he fouls back the first pitch fastball. Uh, from behind the plate. Explosive off the bat of Brown. Well, Brown's now had 100 big league at bats this year. Five homers, 18 RBIs. Very nice. And hitting right around, well, hitting 280. So that's a pretty nice line for Brown. As Duda flies one out to left. And Dominic Brown is there. 
One out. Well, the Mets with two home runs today. Log on to SNY.TV slash Dwayne Reed to print out your coupon for $4 off any Vic Stakewell or NyQuil 12 ounce or liquid caps redeemable at any Dwayne Reed or Walgreens store. And I needed the teeth whitener. All right. Change it up. Yeah. You didn't move fast enough. <laughs> Here's Justin Turner. Turner's been on base twice tonight with a walk and a hit batsman. He's also struck out twice and had lengthy conversations with Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire. Well, the Mets have now equaled their largest city field output of the season. They scored 11 against the Padres on opening day. They have scored 11 against the Phillies today. They needed it, right? Uh, the way that things have been going. I mean, the one game that they. One and scored some runs of Jonathan Nice drove in three of them. On the ground to McDonald at short. And Turner retired two out. So one more crack for Matt Dendecker to get a hit in his first big league game. He's gone over for four today. He did reach on a fielder's choice in the seventh and steal his first base and score his first run. So he's got a couple of marks on the statue. Yeah. Well, Troy Hawkins has not yet worked over the last couple of days. So he'll come on and make his first appearance in this series in the ninth. And Dendek Den Decker grounds one for Utley. And that retires the side. But a home run from Andrew Brown. And the Mets now have an 11 to 3 lead as we head to the ninth at City Field. Three run walk off home run on the bottom of the ninth off Grant Balfour to not only get the win for the Tigers, but to get Max Scherzer off the hook. He was going to have his second loss of the season. Instead, he stays at 19 and 1. What a year Torrey Hunter has had for the Tigers, by the way, in a year that Fielder has not been great. Cabrera, of course, off the hook. But uh, Torrey Hunter has been fantastic as two, Troy Hawkins was comes in. Two out in the bottom of the ninth. They were down 6 to 4, and Hunter goes deep, and the Tigers win. Wow. Jimmy Rollins will be the pinch hitter for the Phillies as we start the ninth inning. 
Bet you it was a high fastball, Gary. Saw the Troy, uh, saw Torrey Hunter, Tommy Hawk won here when Detroit was in town. Rollins fouls it off. Matt Dendecker playing his first game in the big leagues. And now playing alongside Juan Lagares, who will play the ninth inning. No bad ninth in the order. This is a combination that we might see a few times in the coming days, and this gives Terry Collins a chance to get Lagares out there and right to get him a look from that position. Of course, he's been just brilliant playing in center field all year. I'm not sure you can get a much better defensive outfield than the one the Mets are putting out there now. Well, it's the fastest outfield the Mets have had since Carlos Beltran patrolled center. Carlos Gomez played right field and Andy Chavez was in left. That was pretty good too. <laughs> Rollins getting the day off today. Two for 11 in this series. And Hawkins throws him a curveball and he fouls it off. Well, when you look at Eric Young, he's been outstanding, especially coming in on the baseball. Then Decker, who saw in spring training, just highlight reels of plays. And Lagar is probably the best jumps I've seen from a center fielder in quite some time. Now, Terry's been pretty firm about that for the moment when they play together, Den Decker will play center field. Do we have any idea how it would shake out long term? Mm. Who's best off playing center and who's best off playing right if it comes down to that? Well, what's interesting is that if you, before the season, then Decker was light years ahead or right. supposed to be light years ahead of Lagaris. Remember, Lagaris uh, started his career as an infielder, so has learned the trade of being an outfielder a little later. And that's the one thing that favors moving him to the corner is that he had a lot of experience playing corner spots early in his outfield career, whereas Dendecker has always been a center fielder. 3 2 to Rollins, and he hits one out to right. This will give Lagaris a chance to look at one from right field, and he handles it with no problem. One out. <laughs> a smile from Lagaris. Uh, he could play anywhere in the outfield. I mean, he is that kind of naturally. Innately gifted. Told the story last week about when Lagaris was shifted from shortstop to the outfield. I asked him, How long did it take you? you know, he played the infield your entire life. How long did it take you to feel comfortable? And I thought he'd say, You know, a couple of months. He said, uh, A week. <laughs> a week. <Wow. laughs> yeah, it just, he, it, it, it just came naturally to yeah. him. And that, that's what the coaching staff down there in the minor leagues saw. And that's why he got the opportunity to play out there. We heard today before the game from Terry Collins, and I've heard it from others. Do you get the comparison to Carlos Gomez when they make it to Juan Lagares? I don't see I, that. I don't see it. I don't I see it at Go all. Gomez, first of all, is a lot faster. Uh, and a lot bigger. A lot bigger and was more of a an unpolished product mm -hmm. when he got here. Because he was also a little younger. I mean, yeah. I think Carlos was 21 when 21. he came up, whereas Lagaris is 24. Um, Lagaris came up maybe as undisciplined as a hitter in terms of his strike zone management. But there's very little that Lagaris that does on the field, on the bases or yeah. in the field that does not look disciplined. And Gomez just the opposite. Right. He just uh, um, they talk about. What did Vin Scully say about Yasiel Puig? Called him a wild horse. A wild horse? Well, that was Carlos Gomez when he first came up. Swinging at everything. If it was a single, he's going to try to stretch it into a double. 1 2 to Darren Ruff. And strike three call. So Hawkins has a strikeout, and the Phillies are down to their final out. Geico Sports Night, the only show that's only New York sports tonight. The Jets play their final preseason game. One of our crews already on the way. Giants and Patriots as well. And the Mets get ready for their road trip in Washington. Geico Sports Night tonight at 10.30 on SNY. Uh, we've got to start a fine system. We really do in this booth. Certain things you can and cannot do. 
Pete Orr, the batter, with two out and nobody on. And he lines one toward the middle. Murphy is there to grab it. And that caps off a terrific day for the Mets. Murphy with four hits. Wrecker with a home run on his birthday. A three-run triple for Eric Young. Great pitching by Carlos Torres to get the win. And the Mets get a split of the series with the Phillies with an 11-3 win. You know, if there's ever been a team... Terry Collins' team needed a laugher, and they got one today for a couple of reasons. One, Carlos Torres, after Matsuzaka could only go four innings, needed to go deep in the game. He did. He got it into the seventh inning. And the Mets had their hitting shoes on today, and on his 30th birthday, what a game by record. Home run, drove in a couple, and scored three. Even made a great catch on that foul bunt. And the Mets... Finish off a three and six homestand with an overwhelming victory as you check out today's game summary presented by Astoria Federal Savings. Second longest start of Carlos Torres' career didn't walk a batter, struck out six to match a career high. The Mets matched their largest home output of the season as they beat the Phillies.